I thought Biden did a good job, man. Biden won that bitch. That's real talk. All right, we live, y'all. Okay. You know, I mean, like you said, it was a shit show, but John, Donald made it a shit show. That's real. Like it's it's to the point where they're uh they're actually changing the rules for debates now. Like for the first time ever, they're gonna Peace. like turn mics off. Ah. Yeah, they got to turn it off. Just like the Oscars. You think you there. think that's gonna stop a nigga like Donald though? We'll see strong, how we're gonna see to a strong voiced motherfucker that ain't stopping nothing. We're gonna see what a new what uh, the new my thing. Mic off and see what happens. He gonna have his own mic. <laughs> turn my mic off and see what happens. He's gonna have. I remember his they own tried mic. to turn our mics off at the at the Apollo one time because we went over our time, and and um we just made the crowd sing. The you went a cappella. <laughs> yeah, but we had the crowd doing it. Like you know what I mean? Like they sang all the words and shit. Just stuck the mic out. I got one of those voices too that carry and project live. Like my my mic. I don't know if some club I was performing. I think I was doing some shit with Ed OG in Boston, and I guess it was getting past curfew, so they was like lowering the shit little by little. I just projected louder. Nobody was the wiser. <laughs> Strong lung. <laughs> Iron lung. Iron lung. Wait, Godfrey's frozen. What are you looking at? I'm looking at a frozen Godfrey. Yeah, I'm looking at a frozen Godfrey too. What's good, y'all? How my how my mic sound? You sound great. I probably sound like the telephone and Godfrey is frozen. Okay, I just heard from uh, our special guest. Okay. And he's about to be coming in the room soon. Oh shit. Uh can y'all see the, the comments? Or no? no. We don't okay. see any of that. All right, well hang on, hang on. Uh, I, just you're in this, I just see donate. We back. Oh yeah, I see the comments now. There goes uh you you do? No blessing family. There goes, Peace. Uh, we back. He said, Godfrey has a car? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> seatbelt and everything. Look at the seatbelt. Yeah. Uh -huh. What's up, my anatomy family? So, I miss y'all. Tell, tell them about the safe songs you be singing in the car that keep oh, you safe. Oh, so a, a deer, a female deer. <laughs> Ray, I'll Ray, drop a golden drop a golden star. Me, 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 so a ball to run. So a needle's bullet thread. I know to follow so I drink with jam and bread. That will bring us back to Dodo. A deer, a female deer. Look at him. And the police ain't fucking with him at all. Hell no. They'll be like, hello, officer. Three, a name I call myself. Ah. They'll be like, let him go. He's safe. Ah, a long, long way to run. All right. Get the camera out of your Wait, stop Okay. Your first screen. of all, <laughs> well, welcome back to the Not A Mean Godcast, y'all. Everybody, y'all see, y'all see the goddamn um title. So go ahead and click that right uh that like button. I was gonna say that Royce button. Go ahead and click that like button before we even think about getting started in this bitch. Click those likes. Yeah. Where's my moderators in the house? Where's my mods at? How's everybody sounding? I don't think we got oh, echoes oh, oh. this time. We one, two, one, good, two. Ain't we? Yeah, yeah. So I can't see. Oh, hang on. Is, is, is Godfrey somehow? Hey, oh, he was in solo mode. My bad. Here we go. Hey, Godfrey hey, hey. He was in solo mode. You was in, you was in, um, Solo mode. But y'all yeah, can hear us, y'all right? was going to see me? Yeah, there she go. Hang on. Let me, I'm going to give y'all a little solo digger just for a second because. Hey, everybody. Her. I miss you guys so much. Oh, my God. It's been so long. It's been like forever. Yes, I just let Jamar and Godfrey do their thing. You know, let's let them go on their whole Vlad spiel. You know, I was just looking fine from the side now, whatever. But I'll be back, baby. We back. Yeah, it's yeah. all over, Godfrey. 
I'm almost at the crib. I'm almost easy because I got to charge my phone. Oh, look at them. Good. Oh, I miss y'all so much. All right. Okay, take me off solo now. Stop. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, we back. Yeah, we are. The title. Click those likes. Get those likes up. Thank you, King of Bakersfield. He said Ra is in the building. In the building. In an undisclosed location that Jamar already disclosed. <laughs> but y'all forgot about. So but they forgot. About it. Um, Click those likes. Get those likes up. I want to see those likes up. That's how you get the notifications out. Oh, is that what they got to do? Yeah, y'all got to y'all got to get those likes up. Ah, you mean the thumbs up thing down yeah, that thing? Yeah. Uh, that okay. helps get the notifications out. So Oh, I thought that was just like they just judge it and go, "No, nope, yeah." Well, nah, that helps put you in the algorithms and all that type of shit. So, um, you know what I mean? And we want to get our shit to where it's in the regular YouTube algorithms and all that. So That's right. The, that's right. Clicking the like button, you help us uh do what we need to do go where we need to go thank you for getting us where we at oh shit we have our guests coming in okay we have our guests coming in okay um hang on to bring them in in one minute quick public service announcement anyone in the spartanburg south carolina area this friday october 2nd i will be performing at the midtown lounge uh, we'll be performing at 50% capacity, so, you know, we'll be nice and spaced out and socially distanced. So, y'all come on Ooh. out and enjoy the last of the what is to be fall, summer weather before, yes, <laughs> before everybody got to go back in the house. Right. All right. Everybody uh, click that like button. Um, we about to bring our special guest on. Um, <laughs> you know, we had a, we had a, we had a dry run with this before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was wondering we, if you were going to tell the story. We, you know? we were just practicing. We was yeah, practicing. We did a practice run and it, and it went so well that we said, all right, you know, we're going to do a real one now. <laughs> um, and we're going to let the, we're going to bring the people in on it and all of that. We're going to let y'all be privy to it. Cause y'all wasn't privy to it last time. Um, and I know probably y'all never saw this coming, but this is uh, this is what black solidarity looks like, y'all. So with no further ado, let me welcome to the show our guest, Royce the Five Nine. Yeah, okay. Okay. What up, what up? Yeah. Man, let me see if I can find some headphones real quick. So I can can you, and, and, and if you could, if you could uh, turn it to the oh, side. This way? Yeah. You forgot the practice run. The phone supposed to be sideways. There you go. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. There you yo, go. yo, 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 check. Are you recording? I'm recording. Man, First I of see all, all kind of red shit. Yeah, check yeah, the yeah, yeah, check yeah. The yeah. Red yeah. Dot. You see in the corner it says live and it got a time check, and all that. Check the red dot, son. Even if I didn't, if it wasn't recording on that thing, it's going to different live streams. So it's recording on YouTube, Facebook. We got it. We good. Look, we we might even need the fans to uh to to screen record. No, no, food. we good. We good. We got we good? it. We got it. Okay. We got it. We got it. Uh, okay. Now, all right. Now, guys. Look at Jamar getting sensitive. Uh huh. I'm, yeah. I'm listen, blowing up the spot. It was bro. my second time using the thing. I'm gonna take full responsibility for it. And a nigga that, did some dumb shit. That's all I can. That say. last one was a good one. Oh, it was can a we, great Can one. we just share really quick how we did this beautiful, organic interview? I mean, there was just so many moments of vulnerability and and reconciliation, and I love you. And Jamar <laughs> calls me the next morning like, you know that beautiful interview that we had last night with Roy? It didn't record. It didn't record. <laughs> oh, so natural, non-contrived. Uh, oh, my natural, God. Natural, natural feelings. Wow. Um, okay. Moments I mean... of solidarity. <laughs> yes. Flowers Listen, being uh, given. You know. You know, just regular black people shit. Yeah, man. Like, 
shit happens. The devil be at work sometimes, but you know, we we got it right, man. And, 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 and the fact that you're gracious enough to come back and, and, and give us a do over, man, I appreciate it. Um, because what we're doing right here, right now, on some real shit, is 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 great symbolism for our people as a whole. You know what I mean? Um, thank you, Jessica Jones. Everybody, you know, knows in the past, you know, with all the Vlad shit that was going on, and you know what I mean? You and I might have traded barbs in the past, and but that shit is in the past now. You know what I mean? And we are coming together for a common cause um, for this thing called hip-hop that we love and this culture that we love. And we saying that we not uh, going for the disrespect and we're going to be uh, basically repping ourselves how we want to be seen. And you were someone who helped push that line. Yeah, man. Well, I, I I appreciate that, man. I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, we we're gonna we're gonna set we're gonna set a good example. We're gonna set a good example. We're gonna send the right message. Um, I think we I think we just I think we're getting a little too comfortable in that place of judgment, that place of like, let me point out what you're doing wrong. Let me point out everything that's wrong. Let me point out. Let me just be. Let me find an opposition within my own people you know what i mean like if, if you're constantly doing that then there's something that you're missing um as it pertains to the picture that you're supposed that you're supposed to be looking at you know what i mean so I, i'm just trying to like i'm trying to get us all to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time man you know like i don't think that there's anything that we're all gonna just agree on across the board we, we gotta we gotta start respecting each other's ideologies man and like try to do a better job of understanding each other and being okay with disagreeing with each other and still supporting each other, you know, because those moments, those public moments of contention are the moments of, are the exact points of power for the people who are like, you know, feeding the misappropriation and shit like a Vlad. I hate to use him as, as an example, but. Well, we have to right now. Cause you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on it like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not really, um, I don't, I don't wish any ill will on them. I just think that we, we shouldn't support anything that we shouldn't support anybody that doesn't respect us. So I don't believe in like attacking or like going on like a, a, uh, like a whole tirade and trying to convince people not to go to his platform. I just, I want us to all know our value. You know, and I think if we all just if we all just not allow ourselves to be disrespected and we all just exercise our right to put our attention, our money in places that, you know, like that respect us. I think that the results will show nothing really needs to be said. You know, what I mean, like the, the, when I was doing like that, that broadcast with mice, Tamika was in the comments like, you know, this is what you know, this is what they tried to do to me, like the. The powers that be tried to do to me. And I'm like, no, I'm not trying to do to him what they tried to do to you. I'm not trying to do to him what they did to Nick. I'm not trying to do that because that's not that's not who I am. You know what I mean? But I do think we need to, to utilize those kinds of opportunities to be able to find value within self. And we need to look at those situations and learn something from them. You know what I mean? Like just it's period. You know, and this is black music. It's black music. We need to control it. You know, ownership is another conversation. Equity is another conversation. You know, but unity is the conversation. It's the conversation. It's the one muscle that we have not flexed yet. It's the one thing we haven't tried. That's like, right. Stay on that page long enough to see the results that we're looking for because what we're looking for, we never experienced it. You know, it's almost like wishful thinking to some people. You know, so it's just like I, I, every I can't race, do it no more. Huh? every race knows, every culture knows we don't stick together. I had, a, uh, for example, I had a friend, his dude was a heavy, heavy, heavy drug dealer. And uh, I remember he went overseas to do some deals. Right. 
And he's one of them dudes, ain't you know, you guys know he ain't scared of nobody, blah blah blah. And he went to do some deals with the with the Chinese, the, the, the triads, you know. And he was there and he was talking to the head guy when they before they made a deal, they had a little regular conversation. And he said, you know, he said, the one thing about the Chinese people, we envy black people. We envy you because you guys are you have the best style, you have the best music, everything. We love it. But the one thing you don't have is unity. You don't stick together. You don't. And that's he that just hit him. Like there's no he says, no matter what type of thing you do, you never stick together. That is your weakness. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, we 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 been we've been kind of like programmed to to have like this every man for himself mentality. No, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's it's difficult to grasp the concept of like yeah. If you if we can't even happens to one of us is happening to all of us. You know, we, we couldn't even get we can't even get on the same page to fight for black equality. Like all of the black, <laughs> all of the black coalitions are fighting each other. And Can you believe it? Are sitting back looking like look at them. They can't even look. Look at them. Shit like, look at them. like it, it's nothing. I, mean, I don't know. I feel like we give them all the sound bites they need to discredit every single movement. Right. Well, yeah. Well, well, I mean, and, and I think we've been, we've been being we've been case studies to them for so long. You know, like they, they just examine everything that is us and like yep. they just get out, they get out ahead of it. You know what I'm saying? Like they just kind of like yep. they can see value. They can see value before we can see it, you know, and then Man. it's like once they have it, we're in a position where we feel like we're asking for it. You know what I mean? Like in, in, in some cases asking for it back. I don't want it back. You know what I mean? Like like. Like Dame said, I don't want you to sell my own culture back to me. You know, right. I don't want you to think that I'm one of those guys that's that's here to try to pander to you or success in my mind means I have to be accepted by you. You know, like there are mediums where that's a thing, but I'm not interested in those mediums. I'm interested in hip hop. I'm not interested in being famous. I'm interested in being able to express myself through art and, and like not have to like stand up to the to the to the socially engineered pressure that is artistic everything you know what i mean like i'm not an employee of the people you know what i mean like i'm i'm growing i'm growing within the art form i'm learning more about self by expressing myself through the art if i can't do it that way then i can't get fulfillment you know what i mean so i'm just doing that as a person in general and i, I got a i got a way one thing that i've been through against the other another thing that i've been through and there's it, there... uh -oh. oh you cut off uh -oh. uh -oh. uh -oh. if there's one thing that i've been through there you go wait. there he goes can y'all see me no we, we hear you we don't no, see you it. a black screen right now why did it do that it, my bad man my phone keep ringing how do i hold on it's all good damn our wi-fi can't stick together yeah, man. <laughs> we didn't, and just for the record, we didn't have any of these problems our last show. Yeah, not, not that, not that we're recording. <laughs> nah, it's all good. It's all good. Well, you I mean, know what I just I, wanted you know, to say. Oh, he's okay. Call back. I just wanted to say that you and I, Digger, are an example of um people that can agree to disagree like i feel like we agree to disagree almost fucking every day um every day we we feel but once yet, a week but we, but yet but we, we find the common ground every day all day long right <laughs> on some uh you might have missed this part i was just saying digger and i you know we're the epitome of being able to agree to disagree like every day we agree to disagree like like She'll be talking about some shit and I'll be like disagreeing or vice versa. But at the same time, we, we text war that, every day. Right. <laughs> but we find that common ground. We don't fucking hate each other at the end of the disagreement. Like we just be like, all right, well, I guess. Or Digga you know just mean? doesn't show up sometimes. It just is what it is. And we got to show up. <laughs> like, Digga right, goes, you're right. I just won't yeah, be here. She'll just a boycott for a few you. shows. No. Oh, no, that is not what I that do. I'm messing happen. with you. We're messing. <laughs> that is not what I do, y'all. <laughs> yeah, we... I was busy. <laughs> no, no, but you so, know what's 
you know what? I'm sorry. Yeah, just real quick, I just want to add to what you're saying. Um, what's great about that is we have these, you know, we have these dialogues and these discussions, and at the end of all of them, it's always, you know what? We got to let's say this for the show. Let's say this for the show. And we don't never do it on the show. <laughs> right, I told you some shit earlier. I said, you know what? Say that shit for the say show. It for the show. Right? <laughs> I don't even want to hear that shit right now. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I've always been like that. It's like a, it's like as soon as I start like trying to like capture something, that's when it's like it never works for me. You know what I mean? Like mm. I'm not at a some funny point guy unless some funny <laughs> shit, unless I just say some funny shit. That's why I don't understand how comedians do it. How you guys right. just turn it turn it on whenever on cue? You yeah. know what I mean? Like with me, if I tell a funny joke, it's just some shit that just happened in the moment. I can't pre-plan a funny joke. You know what I'm saying? Well, well let me ask you right two here. gentlemen a question. Uh both both you guys. We're well, we're all MCs. Now we know hip hop, you know, one of the foundations of hip hop has always been like competitiveness and, and battling and things. Do you find that it's hard to do that now because of where society is and, and everybody being so hypersensitive and everything and tensions just being so heightened that it's, it's hard to just like have. And then even with social media, like then you have a, all of these external forces chiming in, which turn situations way more serious than just friendly, competitive rap. You, you find it hard to like, to be like that with some hip hop shit now, just like the fun competitive part of it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just because I, I just feel like the way that everything is moving from a technological standpoint, it's just, you know, like we can, they can critique things in real time. And then social media in general, I feel like it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's messing up people's comprehension skills. Yeah. You know, so like, I can't even I'm afraid to even tweet somebody's name because not yeah. because of what my intention is, but just how they may take it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I, I remember a time in hip hop where it was a lot more full contact. And I think that's what made it fun. So now, even though I still have those qualities as an MC, which, you know, is my first love, it's not fun. It's not fun if everybody just offended about everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like right. I want to be okay. able to say in a rhyme, you know, these bitches, such and such, and, such, and I don't want the whole world. Oh my God, you're attacking black women, and like, shut the fuck, shut the fuck like, up. Like, 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 let me, let me just say, like, coming up, I've seen many a battle back in the days, and I cannot say that I ever saw like somebody get punched in the face or some shit like that. And these were customized battles where like. Someone saying something personal about you, like if you had a big nose, they're talking about that particular nose, like you know what I mean? Like, and nobody got beat up, it was just some hip hop shit, like, and motherfuckers just be like, oh, and you know what I mean? Like, it just be this response to whatever the fuck you said, but it wouldn't be so personal where somebody like might get killed over this shit. Like, you, you know, know what I mean? Like, you know, battling ba battling has turned into like a whole kind of like business now. You know what I mean? So yeah. I damn near look at those guys like how I look at fighters. You know what I'm saying? Like one, one of their qualities is whoever has the tougher skin, you know, that may be the one thing that makes them win. You know, like, and that's yeah. like one of the things that we as MCs admire. Like, damn, he just, he could just let that dude right. be in his face and say all this shit about him. I don't know if I would be able to do that. You know what I mean? And it's just like watching like a fighter and like um, he, he get hit low or something. He get fouled or something and he keeps his composure because he's on a professional level. Right. You know, like the amateurs brawl in the ring and do unprofessional shit. But the guys, the top tier guys, they know they're doing it for all the marbles. So they know they got to have tough skin. They got to take shit. And Thanks. that becomes part of, you know, like one of their weapons that they can use. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. we more like on the spot with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen a lot of guys get punched in the face because Detroit has been sensitive about battling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> been sensitive. He says, so I've seen that shit. Been sensitive about battling, but also like, we, North we, too. we used to fight each other over battles, but didn't just make up. You know what I mean? Like, we, we weren't like killing each other over fucking, over, over um, hip hop club rap battles. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like some Chicago shit or something. Godfrey, that's what y'all be doing. 
Yeah, I don't know if <laughs> Godfrey shit. His Wi-Fi. Yeah, we, we lost Godfrey. Godfrey. Right. I mean, you know, niggas would get, get shot at the battle, but it wasn't like they got shot because of the battle. You know what I mean? Like, like, but hip-hop was def- definitely a place for <laughs> violence to occur. Like, Y'all ever seen that? Ever y'all ever seen that footage of uh, the, J- the Jay Z and DMX battle from way back in the day? Yes. Moves just made, niggas just paid. That's just how it is. When my time is up, I'ma be out with them, but you gotta live. I mean, day by day, ain't nothing sweet about it. Act like you don't know what I'm saying. You read about it. Mm-hmm. The energy there looked kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. If you, yeah, if you're talking about, it looked tense. It looked yeah. talking about bringing somebody from one neighborhood to another neighborhood. And right. this guy's like, I got my guy from my neighborhood, and this guy from this neighborhood, he the coldest from over there, he the coldest from over there. That's electric. That's like that's right. It's a high problem. And that's why they had to happen. go to some that's <laughs> why they had to go somewhere that was neutral, because neither one of them was uh was from there. DMX is from Yonkers and uh Jay Z is from Brooklyn. That they did it in the Bronx. So that was I guess like almost neutral territory, even though the Bronx is pretty close to Yonkers. How long was I going? You was gone for a minute, man. What? What you get? You was gone for a minute. You sound like a nigga that just, just got knocked just, out. The Wi-Fi just, I don't know what the hell happened. You got Nelly's Wi-Fi. Oh, hell. Hey, OG, OG <laughs> can you turn, is it any way you could turn your volume up? Mine? For me? Yeah. Uh, hang on. Because I can't find my headphones. You're the only one who I can't hear that well. Sound check. You hear me? That's yo. Better. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. Can you hear me good now? Yeah, that's better. Okay. So really quick, just to bring some context of how we all got here. Now, we like we said, we shot this interview prior. And at that particular moment in time, uh, every, uh, emotions were still running high in regards to the blast situation. Now, we know that Jamar, you've conducted a few interviews since then, so I'm sure to our audience, it probably feels like at this point uh, we're beating a dead horse with it. But that is yeah, we still uh, gotta was, we still gotta get this brother's but, take on it. And, but and that was into it. you know mm-hmm. that was initially uh, up to my understanding, right, Jamar? Your, your reason for reaching absolutely. out absolutely. He was the he was the first one basically that one we the, interviewed about it. Um, before Cam, right. before my son. Um, yeah, I just want people to know that because I did see a couple of comments of, oh, okay, so, so no, we need to understand. And that's another thing, too, I just want to say to people, like, I, it, it, I know giving, sometimes giving things too much energy can can also be a bad thing, but we also don't want it to just go away. We don't want this to be, oh, we wasn't fucking with Vlad on this week or this moment and you know and now it's all good like people need to really understand how serious this is um i personally you know i don't really have a a rapport with vlad the way you gentlemen had i did uh you know i have done a, a couple of interviews with him in my in my career but um I've always, uh, you know, I've, I've always had my, my reservations about him, and, and I'll just reiterate them from the previous interview. I said my my issue with Black, and by all means, you know, he he seemed like a cool dude. You know, I, I pretty much met him through through you, Jabari, and, and, you know, we, we, we hit it off. Uh, he definitely expressed that he's a supporter of, of Rock Digger, and I've seen him, you know, tweet things. And, you know, let the choppers fly on the uh, on the bars on my behalf, things of that nature. So, you know, I just uh, I I recognize that. But one of the things, and I even brought this to Vlad's attention when he was uh, a guest on the show, was that the difference between his platform and a lot of the other platforms, like a Lipstick Alley or a Boston or a Shade Room, is I don't like the fact that he doesn't let things go. It's like uh, something will be a hot topic for 48 hours, 72 hours shelf life, and then it's on to the next salacious topic. But the thing that Bob always bothered me with Vlad was how he would constantly bring something up to different guests and different guests and different guests and inadvertently cause tension 
um, amongst these guests with each other, you know, outside of his platform. One one example is uh, you two gentlemen, uh, Boyce and Jamar. We saw Vlad drag the guests of hip hop conversation out over and over and over again to any and everybody who came up there. Um, I've seen him, you know. I'm, I'm when I didn't want it, when I didn't want it dragged out. Right. You and see I, what I'm saying? Just like he don't want this dragged out right now either. And I and I, I I saw him do it recently with the you know with the Nick Cannon situation and you know and then uh, DL Hughley made some comments uh, in regards to Griff and 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 Griff didn't take it very well and he's on his platform you know uh, venting about DL Hughley and it's like wait I don't want to see DL Hughley and Professor Griff uh, ex- you know exchanging words like and this is a result of you know, this man's platform. So that is something that has always bothered me about Vlad. Because I feel like the other, you know, the other sites, they just post things and go. But, you know, Vlad is a person and he's keeping conversations going that sometimes should just be put to rest. So that's always been like a, a, a point of contention for me with his platform. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, um, I agree with you with what you said about him as a, as a as a person. As far as what I know about him as a person, you know, like I had a had a pretty decent relationship with him, industry type of relationship with him. He, he always seemed cool. I don't think he's like a racist or nothing, no shit like that. I just think um, he comes from a different culture, and um, sometimes we have what I call a culture clash. You know, sometimes right. lines get crossed sometimes unintentionally and then you know like if you've been around long enough and you know how to read the room a lot of times intentional you know like i, mm-hmm. think, I think that the whole minister thing that was personal that was mm. that was a personal attack you know Absolutely. like and I, I think we we need to be able to identify with those moments so we can hold people accountable because that's all i was saying and then all of us witnessed a straight up snowball effect straight up snowball effect because what he does is you know he uses platform to attack and then he uses a uh, divide and conquer to not apologize and then he that gives him confidence and then he turns around and now he's bullying us i'm going to negotiate with you about how i'm going to respect you you know what i mean like that's how i took it and it's difficult to do that and express it without making it seem like I'm trying to get everybody else to take it like that too, because I understand how it is to have a relationship with somebody. And it's like, he's going to lie. He's going to go, Oh my bad. I didn't mean nothing by it. But it's like, I, I spoke to Vlad. He said that he may have dropped the ball this time on the minister thing, but the minister has said other things in the past right. that have offended him. So he's because of that, he's not going to apologize. And then he went on to say, you know, I'm cool with mice, right? You know, you know, he like, even got into the science of I forgot about this, but he even got into the science of Yakub. He started talking about the science of Yakub and how the white man was created, like that that was ridiculous or some shit like that. I said, "Is that is that any more ridiculous than fucking a snake talking to to a woman or some shit like that? Like, what the fuck are you talking about?" And then then, then he realized, like, "Oh shit!" Like, yeah, I guess there's a lot of. Uh, stuff in religion but um you know this whole thing about a scientist you see what i'm saying like like this dude definitely had a a personal a personal beef with just the ideology of the nation of islam and anybody that may think like that um and i understand that you know like i think that's okay too i just think he needs to be able to separate his personal feelings from what's being conveyed on his platform not to not, right. to not that i want to be able to control what's conveyed on his platform but i have to be aware that he built his platform in in black culture right he has no platform without black culture you know it's it's very easy to, to make yourself seem like you're some like boss within our culture if nobody's checking you for none of the stupid shit that you're doing you know what i mean like if everybody can just see that for what it is him for what he is then he's not really that important at all and that's no disrespect it's just what it is we're like we're the 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 divine ones we're the great ones 
You know what I mean? Like we lend our credibility to things and they last. You know what I mean? The only difference Facts. is the, 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 the platforms and the things and the, the, the media outlets and the people that we lend our credibility to and that we give away our swag to, they have a better understanding of what it's worth. You know, so mm -hmm. it's just like we can take all the time we need to figure out how to place value on ourselves. Just in the meantime, let's not let anybody walk all over us because if we send that message and we send that signal, then everybody's going to do it and it's going to slow that process. By the time our kids come into this shit, they're going to be worried about making every little mistake. And Vlad's kids are going to come into this shit and drag his nuts through the culture and stomp through here without a care in the world and play musical chairs with all the executive seats with a red carpet rolled out for him because the power has right. been preserved. Right. We got to infiltrate. We got to either infiltrate or build somewhere else. You know what right. I mean? So, I mean, well, we along, over here building with that. We got to just establish boundaries. That's all. Like, we don't have to, like, bully anybody or be like, yo, this is how you should talk. Yo, man, I think it's a place for his platform. You know, like, it's it's an ignorance. It's an ignorance that's relative. You know, you outgrow it. You don't look at it. Just don't mm -hmm. use it to feed narratives that are hurtful to our culture. Like, like criticizing Dame as a father. Feeds right. a narrative that's shaped around black men that are to our detriment. You don't right. have the right to do that on a platform in black culture. Let's right. put put aside how important Dame is. Let's not use semantics and say Dame's not as important as Farrakhan. He is to somebody, maybe not you, but he's still Dame Dash. And you're just DJ Vlad. You'll never be Dame Dash. You don't have to agree right. with him, but Dame Dash built Rockefeller Records. If he didn't build Rockefeller Records, I'm not sitting here right now. Vlad didn't build anything. He's selling us our own trauma. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. as long as he can put that into, into perspective and stay in his place, he'll get nothing but respect from me. I'll go do interviews and all of that. But if he can't respect the minister and he's just in here, just, you know, just tracking, tracking mud through the, through the house on the carpet, then he can't have a relationship with me. And I just, I'm just at a point in life where I'm not, I'm not going to allow anybody in my life that's not respectful. I don't I don't want to be involved in stupid shit. I don't want to talk to stupid people. I did that in my 20s. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it's about elevating now. You know what I mean? Like I don't have any room in my life to sit around with Vlad and talk about all of the niggas with integrity that he's cool with. You know what I mean? Like I don't give a fuck about that, bro. You know what I mean? Like I don't just let's just let's all be respectful. And I'm not asking for anything that I'm not 100 percent willing to reciprocate. You know, it's nothing unfair about what I what I what I'm requiring. You know what I mean? True indeed. True indeed. Man, mm -hmm. um see, I feel like people like me, people like Godfrey, we was trying to, I guess, bring some sort of balance to the shit. So where it wasn't all some bullshit. You can actually go there and for some people you could get some form of knowledge. That that is what I will give him. Um, cause some of these other sites wasn't even giving you that. And him as a white dude, he didn't, I will always say he didn't necessarily have to put that type of knowledge up there. He could have kept it all a hundred percent negative. Um, I do so think that's, you're, you're that's kind of why I fucked with him. You see what I'm saying? You're, I, I will. I mean, you know, to you guys credit, no, you 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 know, your interviews, Jamar, your interviews, Godfrey, very informative. You know, you checked him in certain uh, capacities. You know, the banter was, it was, you know, it was dope. It wasn't like, it wasn't like one of the little kids that have zero media training that's just sitting there talking about where they bury the bodies and shit, you know. Right, that, right. That, the normal Vlad interviews. No, I, I think, uh, I think, what you did was great. And, and, you know, I give credit where credit is due. I think people really got to see how unapologetic you were, Jamar, which, which lended, you know, which lended itself to even helping us boost this situation here with the God cast. Like people were just so, you know, enthralled with, with hearing you speak on Vlad that they wanted to hear you without Vlad, which, you know, which ultimately led to uh, this situation manifesting. So it, it, it wasn't, you know, I, I will I will take that away from him, but I also feel like the 
the things that uh you know the stuff that is perpetuated on his platform oftentimes you know does more harm than good especially for the the young people that aren't so uh you know interview savvy and media savvy and you know don't know when to stop talking right yeah, well, I, I think we just we just different black people are just different you know what i mean yeah. like if we if we fuck with you we fuck with you if we tell you we love you we love you we and we're looking for that in return you know what i mean right so it's like with him it's not that he's not capable of like having a relationship with us he's just one of those people who loves the idea of us you know mm -hmm. like if i'm if i'm with somebody and i'm like yo this is my man i trust him with my life and i'm basing that just off of him being around me for a long time and then when we're finally in a situation where my life is on the line and he's not there, then that's a letdown for our whole relationship. You know what I mean? Like that's what, if you're given an opportunity to show, show the love and respect that you have, that's when you step up to the plate. I'm not going to retroactively go and, and point out all of the good that you may have did and find the silver lining in you. And you can't even place enough value on number one, your relationship with me and number two, your respect for our culture that you can't even place enough value to outweigh how big your ego is. You know what I mean? It's it's like, it's it's underwhelming because it's like, man, I wasted all that time being cool with this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like I could have put that energy into building a better relationship with my son. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, Mice hung out with this motherfucker for years. You know what I mean? He goes yeah. back to him after arguing with me and he shitted on him immediately he wasn't even slick about it man it's so like it's so Crazy. evil to me you know what i mean but not that i think he's an evil person i just think he he's not divine as us so he doesn't realize how fucked up that is you know what i mean and i think a lot of people can't feel on our level and that's a that's a strength i believe nick said something to that degree <laughs> I see, said, I believe Nick said something to that degree. Yeah, <laughs> see, when you talk about something people, about a lack of melanin, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I just don't think I don't think any I don't think anybody is plugged into this earth the way we are. It's just something about us that's just different. You yeah, know, we the and, um, we the people of the soil. Um, yeah, see, yeah, see, it's it's like I, I I don't think um, it's not celebrated enough. You know, See, here's the thing. When you talk no, about a when not. you talk about a vulture, right? When you talk about a vulture, a vulture is someone who takes and doesn't give back. Okay? Now, okay, we know that in most broadcasting, they don't pay for um interviews really. No. Unless well, see, if you went on, uh, it depends on what kind of show you're going on. But let's just say they don't they don't pay for certain interviews normally. All right, cool. They're paying for Michael but, but, Jackson victim interviews. That's right, like but, cool. but 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 now check this out. Check this out. I'm going to use somebody like Oprah, for instance, right? So Oprah basically is getting money in white people's culture, right? In the white people's world, right? So she would have certain people on her show that would but that were regulars that helped get her ratings like dr oz like dr phil what she ended up doing for both of those dudes right there and alanya van zance now that i think about it she put all of them in position to be millionaires and have their own thing going see she knew like she knew she couldn't come in white culture and not give back you see what I'm saying? Like, like he's coming in the culture. He don't even have an employee that makes over a hundred thousand dollars in his organization that's black or white. I don't think either. But you see what I'm saying? Like he's just he's just making his money and he's not giving back to the culture at all. What's up with that? Yeah, a lot, a lot of times it's, it's 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 to the individual. You know, some people. We've been we've been oppressed so long, man. It's like they think every little fucking thing that they do is giving back. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, man, but I, you know, I gave you a pack of gum yesterday. You know what I mean? Like, wait, what do you mean? You're rich, man. You you got more money than you ever had. Yeah, but I'm looking at 
you know, you, you're talking about a carrot that you just gave me. I'm looking at a whole fucking bounty here that you're sitting in front of that that got generated off of me. You know, like, and now it's a problem with me wanting the lion's share. Like, I don't think artists, I don't think artists should be the last ones to get rich off of albums. I don't think labels should get rich off of albums before artists do. I just think it's standard because we said, okay, I think 360 deals are standard because we said, okay. I think streaming is standard because we said, okay, we didn't negotiate. We didn't stand up for, for anything. We didn't say that's unfair. We just said, okay. So it's like, whenever we say, okay, we go further behind the eight ball. And then when it's time to like, we're tired of it. Some of us are, some of us are not, you know what I mean? As soon as they see that, then that's like, I smell blood. You know what I mean? So. I, mean, I fought the good fight, bro. I, I said, look, rappers are not rappers if they don't write their own rhymes. At some point, it just became totally okay to not write. So I, I threw in the towel then. I'm like, oh, well, why am I sitting in the studio busting my ass trying to come up with this last punchline for, for two hours when motherfuckers got whole teams sitting in the damn studio writing? I, I, I threw in the towel like, fuck it. Yeah, some of them they just came, they just came from different they came from different walks of life. You know what I mean? Like that shit was taboo to us. Man, taboo, it was taboo to us, but I mean, if you just want to be famous and your concern is just like trying to make the biggest song possible, then I guess you're you gonna pull all the stops. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and my only my only not even issue, my only thing with that is like that's cool. That's like a way. That's a that's a that's your way, and you're great at that way, but just we don't disagree until you start trying to be like on certain lists. You know what I mean? Like you got to understand, like you're waving your right to be on the MC list. You know, like we're very, very particular with our verbiage, right? As it pertains to the technicalities. But That's MC right. Is something different from a rapper. And, That's you know, right. Like a vocalist is different from a singer. Mm, you know, right. like an artist is different from a producer you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. if you call somebody something like that you call pharrell a producer you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. you're not going to call pharrell a beat maker that's right offensive. you know what i'm saying right mm -hmm. people from other cultures may not know that so it's like it's a cool thing for us to be cool with each other and be able to pull each other's coattail but the second that you get too arrogant to to make corrections we have a problem and if there's nobody right. here to police that then we have a bigger problem and it only affects us you know what I mean? Like, that's what I don't like. You know, right. I don't like somebody saying, okay, this don't affect my bottom line. So I'm going to just do what I want to do until it does affect my bottom line. And then when, when it finally does affect their bottom line, they say sorry and we forgive them. I don't want to be so forgiving. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to give you opportunity to say sorry with no repercussion. Say sorry. Because, no, because nobody else is that forgiving. Is, is, uh, no, is, uh, is, is Wildin' Out back on TV yet? Because Nick no. said sorry. Uh, I did Cannon's class yesterday. Cannon's class is back on, but is Wild So is tell us about that. What's going on with Nick Cannon? Is, is well, Wildin' Out coming back? What's happening? Um, yes, it's coming back. Um, they're still doing it. And he's doing another show he's going to start in Harlem. Uh, he told me about it. So he's going to be doing that again. I don't know about the ownership part. I don't know because I know he was take, doing a lawsuit or something. So I don't know, but I, he's doing it again. And now he's doing something with a lot of cats from the Jewish community as far as producers and all this because he now has a real rapport with everybody. I mean, they sit down and they talk for real. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, and I have a lot of people from the Jewish community. They talk on my for side. real or he says what they want to hear? Like, what do you well, mean? I think they he talk, they for talk for real. He goes, there's well, some Dane Calloway's in here right now. Go ahead. They say we're we're off. It's off record, but they talk for real, and they're doing the, doing things to work together and work together, produce stuff together. So hey, I mean that's all I know. So, but we talked about the Vlad. He hasn't talked to Vlad yet. He hasn't talked to Vlad yet, and he's no. I think mm. he's known him longer than all of us, right? I don't know. Oh, you yeah. So yeah. So he hasn't talked to Vlad yet at all. I mean, Vlad was acting like he wanted he wanted him to explain. Now what's funny, um, I got a I got a uh I don't want to keep talking. I want to talk about just some regular hip hop shit in a minute. But 
before we get off of this, I got a letter um, yesterday, right, from a Jewish dude from Israel, right? And I forwarded it to Godfrey, actually. Um, and basically what this guy had to say, right, <laughs> he said he didn't see nothing wrong with what uh, Minister Farrakhan said. He said... Um, if Vlad didn't marry a Jewish woman, he has no right to even speak on Jewish topics and affairs. Mm. And he believes that Vlad should apologize to the minister, especially because he's a religious figure. Mm. This is one of them dudes from over there with the curls over there in Israel, not a real Jew, but you know what I mean. One of those guys. He wrote that letter. Well, I full mean, of respect. It's, it's, I don't think and I was and, think, and with some real shit. I think anybody mm. anybody with just any any sort of like respect or just any integrity that's, that's just a regular kind person understands that if you disrespect somebody or you make a mistake and you cross a boundary, you just you just apologize for it. It's no big deal. Like he already admitted that he was wrong. There's no like, it's not like he's standing on some sort of religious, you know, like belief or ideology. He's simply doesn't like the minister. So he doesn't want to look like he's bowing down because in his mind, he's superior. You know what I mean? And that's cool mm. for you to feel that way. Just not here, bro. That's right. All. And we just, and it's, right. And it's professional journalism. Like you make a mistake, you print a retraction. You make a you retraction apologize. and you apologize in that retraction. Right. Yes. If you right. if you put out a retraction that states what I posted was inaccurate, that's an insult. You're just telling us what we already know. You know what I mean? We want to know. We want to know when you're gonna hold yourself accountable. You know what I mean? Like we don't need you to tell us that it was inaccurate. We knew that when you didn't know. You know what I mean? Like, we don't need mm -hmm. you to tell us that. We want to know how you feel about that kind of fuck up because let's stop acting like, you know, like you just like clueless, bro. If that was like Jay Prince or somebody, you wouldn't have fucking posted that because you would have worried about getting your head blew off. You know what I mean? It's the minister. You don't like him. You think you can play. So you're playing. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't work in a whole, in a whole lot of different scenarios. That doesn't work. It's not safe. You know what I mean? That's why I don't behave like that. I'm the sorriest saying nigga in the world. I'll say sorry in any scenario because I want to live. I don't mm. want to just make mistakes. I want to be respectful. I want people to look forward to seeing me coming. I don't want people to feel like my presence is a burden. DJ Vlad's presence is a burden right now. And he's soft. And that makes it worse. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sitting here and I'm accepting something from somebody that's soft. I don't come from that. I'm a full contact person. So only in the music business do we got to put up with shit like this. You know what I'm saying? Because it just kind of is what it is, you know? So Listen, I was taught order, that a real... We get some order and we can just start policing things just a little bit. It just gets better across the board for us. Our quality of life just changes, you know? like That's my favorite more, word. Yeah, Law we can and order. more things just... And, and just thinking, just thinking as a collector. You know, Listen, I, was taught, I was taught, I was taught a real man doesn't have a problem apologizing when he's wrong, when he knows he's wrong. That's what a real man does. You, you, you're able to assess the situation and put your ego to the side and say, you know what, in that particular situation, I was wrong. My bad. Like, you know what I mean? I apologize. Like, it doesn't make you soft. It doesn't make you any less of a person. It doesn't make you a sucker. Whatever the fuck you think that it's doing that's preventing you from doing it. Um, Man, you owe point, me like... point, it's not like we begging for some point. apology. You said what? <laughs> I said, you owe me like 50 11 sorry. You ain't getting no sorry for me, woman. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> Never. Um, but no, nah, I'm just saying... Um, I'm sorry for being right all the time. Okay, are you happy? Uh, but anyway, Whatever. Uh, um, but but yeah, like like you know, at this point, it ain't like we begging for a sorry from dude. Cause for me, it's too late now. Like even if he did give a sorry now, like it's it's you know, day late, dollar short, 
And um, yeah, you could hold on to that. Um, I think it's unfortunate. I think it's unfortunate that um, he let he let he let this get in the way of some relationships. And I'm not talking about mine because we weren't that close. But y'all seemed like y'all right. close. He was close with mice. I feel like that's unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's it's trivial to me. It's like it's just, it's a quick, easy fix. And I can't wrap my brain around the way he's handling it. You know what I mean? But that's not really up to me to do at this point. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's just kind of what it is, man. The, the thing is to just find a jewel in it and keep it moving. You know what I mean? One thing that we do, one habit that we have is we project. You know, like we we put the shoe on the other foot. You know, mice mice is full of integrity. He's like, yo, I don't like saying the word sorry. It's, 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 it's rooted in emotion, so I don't like making people say it. And it's like you can't do that, mice. He's not right, you. but he but I got him to it. Like I got him to admit. I got him to admit. Maybe it's one of the upcoming episodes, but I got him to admit that he would have wanted a sorry in, in a certain situation. Brother, you know, in the black community, especially respect goes a long way bro. like brothers is out here dying over respect no, I hear you, and for bro. him to not show the proper respect to a minister an elder a leader yeah, yeah. and to his so-called friends and yeah. and and the patrons that helped put him to and give him the lifestyle that he's able to afford now cypher Nah, yeah, that's, nah. a, that's what I'm trying to tell you. At that point, at that point, you start to realize that it's more ego and pride than it is anything else. Because and it's also who he perceives the minister to be, because he he tells me at the end of the day, I'm not um apologizing to somebody who thinks my people are safe. That's what he said to me. I don't know mm -hmm. if he said that to you, but he said that to me. Mm -hmm. Even though I've sat across from him in his own fucking office and he said, is the white man the devil? And I said, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, especially in, in like jail situations and all that type of shit where respect is, is just so high and that's all you have. You're going to let a motherfucker just bump into you and, 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 and not get a I don't give a fuck if he wants to give this sorry or not. Like that's some for some people, respect is all they got. So. I don't care well, he knows, he knows, he knows if it's his, not in your heart to do it. You still got to do it. it. Like, I put it like this. Mice knows his value in jail, you know, because there's not a whole lot of intangibles there. You know what I mean? It comes right. down to what I can do. He knows. What right. He can do, so he's fully aware of what his value is. So he's going to demand right. a sorry because he's going to always know when he's not when he's not being treated like the king that he is. In these types of scenarios. We get tricked sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, we don't know what we're looking at because we're so busy being divine and loyal, we don't even realize the moments where we're being taken advantage of, you know what I'm saying? And that's like, that shit's running rampant in this business a little bit too much, you know what I'm saying? So, you ever did you look at like the way that everybody responded to Shaq and, and Charles Barkley, the way that all of us responded, you know, everybody just started calling them out. And I'm just looking like, why? Like right, what, is this something that happened recently? What happened? Yeah, they they um they spoke on the Breonna Taylor shit, and they were really objective, both of them. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So yeah. it was like they was they were talking, but they weren't. It didn't seem like they were taking into consideration, um, the place of the black where where black women stand right now in America, based off mm. of their actions. You know, mm. like it was completely like everything was being prefaced with like in all fairness. He just kept saying, in all fairness, you know, they went in there, the dude fired a shot first. If I'm a police, I fire a shot back. And I agree, in all fairness. But you're implying that everything is in all fairness. You know what I mean? Like the black, your black experience growing up in America was completely different from mine. You're a superhero. You have socially engineered ideologies. They always treated you fair because... How is it not easy to put the value on you? You're Shaquille O'Neal. You've been a you've been a walking fucking dollar sign since the day you was born. You know what I'm saying? But me, my black ass, I've never got treated fair by the police. You know what I'm saying? I don't right. have a lot of fair experiences with the police. 
So, you know, like I, it's, it's hard for me to look at the way that that the way that they police that situation and see the fairness in it. It's it was just too much sloppiness. It was too much inflammatory, reckless policing at the hands of black people. And it'd be different if it was happening to everybody. It's only happening to us. Oh, you know RZA Islam like, is in the house. Pardon me for cutting you mm -hmm. off. Peace, RZA. We would like to get you on the Godcast at some point. Yes, we would. You oh, say what? RZA Islam. You know, you know who RZA Islam is? Of course. Okay, yeah, he's in the house right now. He's commenting. He's in the Peace. comments. Peace, that's RZA. My, that's the bruh. That's the bruh. Yeah. Um. Please hit me on IG in my DM or something and send me your... Um, Send me your information so we can build because we definitely would like to, uh, yeah, bring you in on this topic. I don't understand, man. Like, I don't understand how somebody could have something against Muslim people, bro. Like, Reza, every time I see Reza, he's soldiering. Yes. He's dedicating his life to his people. How, like, how could I ever, how could I ever condemn that? That's you. That is something that the powers that be have done. Do you, do you realize that? Like, and it it, it seems like it, it all stems with this country. It's like we're we're just taught that you know Mexicans and, and Spanish people are uh, criminals, black uh, gangs, bl uh, black people are animals and thugs. Um, chi the ch the Chinese flu, uh, Indians. It's like anything, anything other than white America is something wrong with. It's antagonized. It's it's frowned upon, and a lot of that uh, has generated, you know, here. It it, it started here. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I, it's like uh, it's programming. It's programming. It's it's. Muslims are terrorists. Uh, I mean, I can go on. Anything other than uh, anything other than blonde hair, blue eye is, you know, it's it's made out to be wrong or left back. Yeah, everything everything appears to be exactly how they want you to see it, you know. And it's it's uh, if you don't have that kind of wherewithal to, to understand that you that you know things are agenda agenda driven, and you just kind of accept shit for what it is which is very easy to do then you know you just become one of those you know people who your idea of um success is a successful white person whatever that looks like to you that's what you strive for you know, and isn't like, it God, I'm sorry. you want to live that you want to live that life you want that kind of house you want that same little puppy you want um you want to make it to pro sports you want to finally marry a white girl you want to fucking talk like white people and you know you made it you know what i mean like you finally made it. You finally elevated out of blackness. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> success to some people. You know what I mean? So it's And when he get on, he he trade you in for a white girl. And ain't that yeah. what he did? You guys were talking about Shaq and um I got hot, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, you, you you you, you look like you was nodding guys, there for a minute. The people in the comments said, Godfrey nodding. Wake your ass up. You don't went it's from the car to outside to you it's just got degrees, like, man. Man. It's a hundred, it's a hundred you degrees. You from Africa. You should be used to that shit. I grew up in Chicago. Yeah, but you got African blood. I'm Nordic Nigerian. You got sub-Saharan blood. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just sub right now. Shit. Yo, um, so Shaq what are you gonna called say, me, sir? Shaq called me when that 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 stuff happened with me and Vlad, and Shaq was like, "Yo, don't 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 get involved with that, you know, because you know I'm Muslim, right?" I go, "You Muslim too? Jesus, you're everything." I think, um, yeah, he's Muslim. So don't get involved in that, man. Just you know, just do that shit you were doing, but just stay out of that. Don't blah blah blah. So now I see don't, him don't say that shit about. Yeah, what does he what mean? Do don't get involved. What, what what did he mean by he that? Said, he, said, he said he just said don't like don't 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 just don't get in the conversation about the nation with Vlad. Let's just don't say the wrong thing. Don't just you know just don't do say anything wrong. That's what he thought. Maybe I'll like say thing say something wrong. I don't know. And I was like, was okay, say something who, wrong. Who was he? I, and I'm, I'm I'm being serious. I'm being serious because I'm I'm 
I'm genuinely perplexed. Like, who is who is he worried about offend you offending? I don't even know. Exactly. He just said, "Yo, don't say, you know, just don't get involved in that. Just um, you know, don't just don't talk about because you know I'm a Muslim, right?" I said, "Okay," but I'm like, "Yeah, but I feel like maybe you I, may say something that may offend the nation." Yeah, but why would I when I've been watching the minister since college? Or maybe I don't maybe. Even, he Maybe he figured because you and Vlad are cool, like that y'all you was gonna be joking about it or something. That oh, could come no, up. but I wouldn't even. I don't even play like that when it comes to the nation. I don't play like that. I don't play like that when it comes to the minister. I don't play like that when it comes to to our to our historians, to our elders. I never play like that. I never play like that. And you know, I met the minister one time, and I keep in touch with it, Elijah Farrakhan. He's a fan of mine, and I keep in touch with cats from the and the Riza Islam and. All, but yeah, I no, I don't I don't play like that. They they really gotta learn how to compartmentalize. I'm a comedian, I'm not a fucking clown. You know what I mean? It's and it's, and definitely, just it's, it's definitely a tough it's a tough um it's a tough topic. You know, yeah, like oh no a, doubt you always gotta trade carefully because everybody is watching you on both sides, but I would I don't ever fix my mouth to say the wrong thing about the minister. That's why I said, ah, oh, we're just gonna be out. Because you just are disrespected an elder, and I'm not going to go into semantics with you about it. I'm not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not a Muslim. You know, all I need is to be black, and that's all I need because we're all in the same family. So, whatever my big brother, Shaq my meant, big I didn't really know what he meant with that. One. My big, but my now big I want to call him. him. Say it again. My big brother called me recently, and he was drunk and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, he was like, "Hey man, when you going?" When you gonna get off all that black shit? <laughs> <laughs> what is this baby like, boy? I was too? Like, excuse me. Yeah, nigga, all this old Black Lives Matter shit, nigga. Like, let them niggas do that, nigga. Make your what? make your music. You know what I'm saying? Why you want to hear all that shit? You know, this is exactly how you talking. I was just like, it's a it's a tough. A lot of these conversations are just. It's a, such an uncomfortable space for some people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just depending on... Mm. It's uncomfortable to different people for different reasons all at the same Hell time. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know, and that's and that's because these conversations have been avoided. So they it just right. becomes more and more uncomfortable. You know, because everybody's afraid to have them. Everybody's being treated like um, they could lose something. If something can be taken away from them, if they if they tell the truth you know like right how can we how can we get past these moments of contention if all you're doing is disciplining me you know what i mean like i need to be able to express and move on to the next thing i don't i don't want to be put in my place i don't want to be told how to speak you know what i mean like i, I want to know what's offensive so i know not to do it again you know what i mean yeah. like i, I still yeah. never i still don't understand a lot of things that happened, you know what I mean? Like, I still don't understand, like, what is everybody offended about? Sometimes I got call people, like, yo, what, what exactly offended you? Like, what part? You know what I mean? Like, that's important to me. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's just, everything just seems so cryptic. It seems more like, well, you said you said something close to the wrong thing, so get out of here. You know what I mean? It's just like, damn. Yeah. We got it. We got we it. Got there it. has to be something set up in place to where we have each other to fall back on. I, you know, I like, think it's I think it's just because uh, everything is so, everybody is so, uh, senses are so heightened right now. Like, you actually have 20 something year olds out here debating politics. Like, we didn't care about that stuff. We were 20s. It's like, you're voting for this guy or you're voting for that guy. Like, now you actually, you know, you're seeing the kids out here debating and, and politics is a discussion everywhere you go. It's It's never. It's never been this much about politics. Like people who you don't even expect to have these conversations with now think they are like an authority because they watch C-SPAN for a day. It's like, it's, mm. it's, it's a lot going on right now. And I mean, we know, who's, you know, we know who's responsible for it, but we, we're going to save that conversation for another show. Yeah. Um, Hip hop shit, man. Hip hop shit. I want to talk hip hop shit. All of this is hip hop to me. It Let's is. Talk hip -hop. But I want to talk direct music shit. Um. Well, something, 
something I would I'm like go back to say. Let's go something back I day. said in the last show that okay, I would bring like it up, to, Digger. That I would like to reiterate for this show. Okay, the voice. This is our uh, thank well, you, Aisha. We love you. Time. <laughs> actually you know getting a bill with each other and um you know like i said uh detroit the whole shady family like y'all are like y'all have always been considered family to us outsiders we have history that go back before any of us had record deals like we were out there in the streets together broke trying to make it park hill day like all of that so over the years, you know, things kind of spiraled and um, I would like to see that reconciled. You know, I'm going to do what I have to do to uh, to bring all of the, the key characters together and, and hopefully we could just, you know, get back on the same page because uh, we were, you know, we were a tight unit at, at one point. Mm. All right. I agree. I agree. I mean, you know, it's just... Uh... I think it's always an easy fix with us. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've always had the quickest conversations. Me and Proof got arrested together. We were in this, we were like in sales right next to each other. We had a beef that lasted like years and we talked for five minutes and it was over. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's a communication disconnect. You know, like we all grew up not knowing how to communicate, you know, and like we all grew up chasing, guarding. Not knowing what we're chasing, not knowing what we're guarding, you know, in that particular case with the outs, that line that I said about them was just me not reading the room properly. It was me going with what I thought was a dope line over over how it may be taken. You know what I mean? Like just MC shit. MC shit where you right. gotta have more foresight than that. You know what I'm saying? But I I love Z, I love Z and Pace. You know what I mean? Like I always will. I always will. Like I I don't that's an easy fix for me. An okay. easy fix. I mean, I, I think, you know, I think a lot of it is because, like, we, we are MCs and we're all cut from the same cloth. So sometimes, you know, when you have, you know, those same personalities, it, uh, clashes happen. But I, I just want you to know that, you know, I've always looked at y'all niggas like family and, you know, at the end of the day, it, nobody wins in the family feuds, man. You know, you know what my, you know what one of my character flaws is that I've been working on. Like, I can say some shit, and then I can, I could identify with being wrong, and I can apologize for being wrong. But if like, if you say something to me while we're trying to work that out, that pisses me off, even <laughs> though I know I pissed you off, and it's just a reaction to what I did, I'll get mad at you for getting mad at me. I don't know where the fuck I got that from. I think I got it from growing up with brothers. Like we just used to like have the weirdest like arguments and the, the weirdest little fallouts and be right back cool the next day. You know, like I guess one good thing that came out of growing up in that kind of household was just I never carry things. You know what I mean? Like I'm on it for the competitive spirit and then I'm off it. The only the only feeling that I ever carried prior to meeting the outs was the love. You know what I mean? And that's like, that's one thing that we just don't embrace and express enough. You know Let me I mean? ask you so something, it's, Royce. It's, it's a growth thing. It's a growth thing. You know what I mean? Like, nobody wants to be looking like that they are like bossing down or nobody wants to look at Vlad. He can't even, he can't even it's find MC, the MC words. Shit. He it's can't a, even it's find MC the words shit. to hold himself accountable. Right. You know Let me I mean? ask you something. What, uh, Royce, what happened to Slaughterhouse? Maybe I'm late. What's going? What's what's up with Slaughterhouse? It seemed like y'all um, came real strong, and then it's like we working. On, we we were working on the album. The last album we were working on, we were working on it. I got sober. That's one of the things that kind of like. Mm. That's one of the things that kind of like slowed shit down a little bit because when I got sober, we were supposed to go on tour, and I had to call all of them and tell them that I couldn't go. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I didn't feel strong enough to be able to do so and that I mean they were real supportive and shit you know what i'm saying so we when we ended up getting back in the studio joe was doing reality tv so we was dealing with a different joe you know what i'm saying um right i was sober so i was you I, were I was a different voice 
but I wasn't like coming up with stuff fast. I was second guessing everything that I was doing. Mm. I was just in a, I was in a space where I was just really trying to get used to my brain clicking on all cylinders. My rhythm was a little bit off. You know what I'm saying? Um, Crook was, Crook was in heavy drinking mode. Mm. And he, me and him used to be the drinking buddies in the group. You know what I mean? So now he's still getting the same fucked up, but I'm sober and serious. Right. So I'm not there to be his drinking buddy. So now he the lonely alky out. So right. Like, and, and, and now when you're sober, you look at that person, you look at that person a little differently. Like, damn, is that how I was acting before? Like, you yeah, know what I mean? When you, like when you first get sober, you judgmental. You know right. I mean? like, you looking at only, him like he look crazy. He looking at right. him like you ain't no fun. Right. <laughs> y'all both looking at each other like y'all crazy right now. Yeah, Cr Crook was um he was the he was the odd man out. He was the odd mm. man. He was the most aggressive. You know what I mean? Like I ain't gonna lie, at that at that time he was on some he was on some black shit. Everything was some black shit. Mm. And we was laughing. <laughs> laughing at him like this nigga, this nigga, this nigga on, on some black shit, you know. What I'm saying? Like, now look at yeah, now now look at you. Now look at you. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's 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 weird to like for everybody to be in different places at different times. But one thing for sure, two things for certain. When we first started Slaughterhouse, everybody was on the same page, and, and, that's and why you can I, hear it. And y'all was because, beasting because we all had um. We all had the same goal in mind, and we didn't have a whole lot of expectations. We it wasn't like, yo, let's let's take over the world or let's like sell a bunch of records. We just wanted to like bring MC into the forefront. You know, how I mean? did that like, come together? How did that originally come together? Like, how did all those guys just say, you know what, this guy, I know this guy, and uh, you know, was it put together or was it just something organically that just grew? Well, Joe Joe was working on this project called Halfway House. And um, he just reached out to all of us because I think his idea was to do the, juxt the juxtaposed version of Swagger Like Us. So mm. it, he just picked all of the guys that were like attacking the internet at that time. Like everything I did was mixtape shit at that time. Right. That was when you can just grab a beat, an uh, instrumental, rap Anybody put it out and they wouldn't flag mm -hmm. it. You know what right. I mean? Like it was fun mm -hmm. to just freestyle. So that's all I was doing. I was just tearing shit, tearing shit up. And um, me, Crook, Joe, Joel, we all had this. We had, we all had similar reputations in the MC community, like in the internet underground community. And um, he just handpicked everybody and and just called all of us and asked us to be on this song. So when he when he called me and asked me to be on it, and he told me who was gonna be on it, I was like, God damn, that sounds like a slaughterhouse. Mm. And he was like, he was, he was he laughed and was like, I I might call the song that, you know mm. what I mean? So I laid my verse and sent it back to him. And um, sure enough, it came out and the song was called Slaughterhouse. And the reaction to the song was something that we hadn't seen before, like in <clears throat> in our individual, you know, what I'm saying journeys. Right. It just it was something different there, you know what I'm saying? So Joe called me and was like, Yo, you you see this shit? Like we got to do mm. some more shit together. Right. I thought he was just talking about me and him. I was like, all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and then my man Kino was like, no, all of y'all. All, all mm. of y'all should keep doing shit together. And I was like, all right. So we just, we started recording more music. And then Joe started whipping out the camera. Now, when he started whipping out the camera, we started noticing that, that people were really interested in what in the you way always we doing. interacted with each other. I don't know why, bro. I don't know why. I have no idea. We just like we, engagement was on a whole nother level whenever whenever it was just us. So we just we just went with it. We just start filming ourselves talking. We just start It's multiple people it. with charisma. You see what yeah, I'm saying? We, Mul we, multiple people with charisma in one room and when you get that on on camera, it's hard to look away. So that's probably what happened there. Yeah, we was being real competitive too. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it always used to be fun to like to like determine who was gonna have the best verse or guess who was gonna have the best verse. Mm -hmm. And it's all gonna come down to, you know, it's like a roll of the dice, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like however everybody's feeling. You know, like the first one we did after Slaughterhouse was in Jersey and Crook was he's the late guy in the group. So he came in late, he flew in late and walked in and we had our verses laid. 
and he came in there and torched that shit. Mm. Mm-hmm. And when he did that, I realized I wasn't as good as I thought I was. <laughs> I was like, man, this shit ain't gonna go how I thought it was gonna go. You know what I mean? Like, it, it ain't. It's, it's not. I thought I was stressed out over over Joe and Joel. Yeah. He, came in, he came in the studio on some other shit. I had the nerve to be all humble about it. I'm like, man, fuck you, man. See, when shit like that happened, I'm going back. And I'm like, nah, fuck that. I ain't leaving this studio <laughs> session till I got the best first. Fuck. That's how you. That's how we be with the outsiders and shit. Motherfuckers clowning you. Go in the booth. <laughs> Laugh a motherfucker out the booth like that shit trash. It was like, Shout out Hassan Campbell in the house. And that really like. We had, you know, we had a rule. We had a rule like um. That's why I don't go in that booth if you're not ready because whatever you lay, that's what you got to keep. You can't be ready. <laughs> oh, 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 that was the rule. Yeah, I like that. Mm. I like that. No re because oh, <laughs> because the nigga no hear reason. your shit and be like, let me go recraft my shit. Uh uh-uh, uh, motherfucker. I'm doing this interview. I'll be right. I'll be there in a second. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Bet. You put your shit down and that's it. Like, like, and you like, you wanted to be the first one, you ain't want to be the right. You with your greedy, yeah. <laughs> right? We'll see. Joe used, to, Joe used to sit around and wait, try to oh, wait, he's, listen to everybody else. He's, first. Like, he's, like a card, he's like a card player, like, he'll, he'll wait and wait. He's just patient. He's no right. cigarettes. I'll be like, What you got, man? Oh, nothing. I'm waiting for y'all. you be smoking a square, you know, <laughs> everybody done, and then he goes. You know, years ago, I, I had a conversation with with uh, Buster Bus, and he was saying that that was his tactic on a lot of these um, features that he was doing. He was like, "God, I always, I always try to make sure that I hear the uh, the other verse first. Uh, everybody else's verses first. I want to, you know, and then I put my shit down. That way, I can, you know what I mean." He do that. I can yeah, I I really, uh, uh, you know, craft my shit, you know, by, and, and assess everybody else's shit, and then just come with my shit and just smash shit. Man, some I of them, some you, of man. them, some of them Buster verses, you had to put them last. Right. You know, that's just where they belonged. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like he just brings a color to the song. That has. And sometimes he'll change the song in a direction that it needed to be last yeah. because. You can't put somebody behind. It's like the song went this way, and then you can't bring it back that way once it goes mm-hmm. that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and while we sitting here talking, like just because you hear the first verse, it means you're gonna top it. Crook then sent me verses before, and it just is what it is. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, I'd be racking my brain, like fuck it, I might as well just lay what I got. He just got this one. You know what I'm saying? So, some so, sometimes some shit can't be top. You can only just. Lay some shit that you get that can just coexist, but just smoking the verse, Crook will send you the perfect verse. He'll, mm. send, he'll write the perfect verse every now and then. He'll send you the perfect verse that can't be topped. I, I honestly, I honestly think that's what's missing in hip hop. Like you know how music sounds different from generation to generation, and for a while I was trying to figure out like what is it about the the females today that it's like they're making these bops that I could vibe with, but there's something there's something missing that was very prevalent in my era that's not prevalent in this era. And I, I finally figured it out. I don't feel like any of the females are trying to be the best MC or have the best verse. It's like everybody's like just trying to make songs, trying to make joints, try, you know, just just recording like i don't feel like except with the exception of like the battle rap girls i feel like none of the girls are getting on these records like i'm trying to let motherfuckers know that i'm the best mc i i i don't get that from the females of today and that's what i think is missing from this uh gen- this era of of ladies yeah i, I think um I think it's just it's a culture thing depends on where you're from like nikki 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 did that you well know? she but see she's not that young either like she's she i don't really she's kind of like the the baby of our generation mm-hmm. at more so than like i don't really put her in the 
you know, in Cardi's generation or Meg's generation. I put her more as like, you know, I guess on the tail on the tail end of us. Like, you know, like the baby of us. Like she's she's not old, but she's old enough listen to that have grown up listening to Foxy and and and, and Nikki I mean, I mean sorry and Kim and so it's like she was still studying and learning at a time when competitiveness was a thing people so, are shouting out Shay Noir right now they're saying Shay Noir is super nice she nice on some female nice. and I, I agree. no and uh, no what, uh, but what I'm not I'm not saying that they're not yeah nice. you're just talking about the competitive side of it I right right mean, right like, yeah I feel like like it's like like if you know Shay Rhapsody it's like no they're by all means they they got bars it's like they're doing what they got to do to to get the song done mm -hmm. but I don't you know I just don't feel like anybody's going it like what we're talking about right now it's like I don't feel like the uh, and, may, and maybe it's not just a girl thing. It could be all the rappers across the board. I just don't feel like any of them are going in this. It's like they're going in the studio to to complete the song or to create this record. No, but I don't feel like I feel like Kendrick might be one of the only ones that do it. Like I don't feel like people are really going in the studio like yo fuck that I'm man, I'm about to I'm about to smash this nigga and like. That feeling, <laughs> you know that what I, you know, you know what shit. I noticed with that, like that, that's especially in today's climate, that's a very tough element to add to a song. Like it's that's the art within the art, you know, because what I'm noticing now, artists are doing, they're just delegating. Like, yeah, Rhapsody, Rhapsody, she has a lot to say and she has a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. so it's like she utilizes her song to get her point across, and then she'll go do radio, and she'll torch that. Mm -hmm. she'll write something specifically for that and she'll just torch that you know like it's almost like these kids now it's almost like they don't want to hear that on an album you know what i mean mm -hmm. like they they want to hear that that's like with, with slaughterhouse they bt never gave us awards they just always asked us to do the cypher it got to a point where it was like no i'm not doing the cypher no more right give us a fucking the award you piece of shit. give us a fucking glass of water if you ain't gonna give us an award you had us present an award you know what I mean? And do everything and then decipher. You know what I mean? It was like that was our jobs and shit. So so let me ask you something. We spoke about this last time in our in our <laughs> unrecorded. <laughs> but, uh, beautiful. Yeah. Video. Um never to be duplicated. <laughs> so so you you spoke about um Slaughterhouse, you had gotten sober. So how many years have you been sober? And huh, what's that? Eight. Eight years. Now Being eight years in sober, do you see a difference in, you know, like lyrically, the 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 shit faced Royce, <laughs> as compared to the Royce right now, and I mean right now because I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> I just saw a freestyle that you did recently. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck you was at, but you had some rings on and a fucking blazer. You know what I'm talking about? You talking about LA Leakers? Sunbo. <laughs> that was a good one. The shit you was saying on there, the the the, the, the just the 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 clarity of thought. I just I could just see where you at, and I'm telling you, for me, that was some of the illest shit I ever heard you fucking say. For Thank me. You, man. For Thank me. you, man. And uh -oh. you, you always been nice, but that shit right there, it seems like where you're going mentally is 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 helping you artistically as well. So, I, I, but what do you feel about that? Yeah, I, 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 um, when I got sober after I went through my crazy phase of being sober, I started um, realizing that the most important thing was just knowledge of self. You know, like you know, when we come into the game. They got the anecdotal facts that they that they regurgitate. You know, pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention to the climate. You gotta you gotta stick. You gotta stay up with what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, you won't get better. I disagree with that. You know what I mean? I think if you could get better as a person, if you can get better, everything gets better. You know, mm -hmm. like if I continue to better self, I'm gonna be better across the board. I'm gonna be a better father. I'm gonna be a better 
husband, I'm gonna be a better rapper. I'm gonna be a better artist. So I'm gonna express myself better. When I was drunk, it was just stagnant thoughts, different ways to repeat the same kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like, and it was just one layer, one layer about how good I could rap. It's a right. ceiling there. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like every artist should have at least that one self-defining album. You know, mm. if you could do that, if you can mm -hmm. find find a way to find self within the art, you should express that. You know, like you're doing yourself a disservice by not doing that. You know, like I used to meet people and they they used to just think I was just wild all the time. I used to get drunk and wild, but I wasn't drunk and wild all the time. I wasn't just that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was, I, I did, I got tired of being associated with just negativity. You know what I mean? Because that that's not like the whole me. This is just like you're seeing my transgressions, and I'm playing myself by not giving you the whole thing. You know what I mean? And that right. comes with just confidence. You know, like there was a point in time when I was younger, when I first got into the game. Well, I just didn't straight up just didn't rap about certain things because I thought people wouldn't be interested. You know what I mean? Like we think ourselves out the game like that by trying to uh, micromanage what we think the fan wants to hear. And yeah. I just got to right. a point. I got to a point where I just, I just said to myself, I, I'm, I'm not a, a, I don't work for the people. I'm not an employee of the people. I'm not an employee of the people, and I'm not just gonna do shit. If I do something now, I'm gonna do it with a purpose because. If I'm just not, if there's no purpose here, then I'm just sitting there and life is just coming at me. You know what I mean? If you're doing everything on the fly and you're making adjustments all day, how can you really elevate? You know what I mean? Like we great, we great motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Like any black person can make it to a million dollars. You know what I mean? Like by default, you know what I'm saying? Like we gotta be able to look at that shit. Like, is that really success? Did I really just reach my full potential? Cause none of us are born great. You know, we we born with the propensity to be great. We got to right, practice. The potential. We got to believe. You know what I mean? And none of these things I thought about when I was drinking because you don't you don't evolve at all. You just you stay stagnant. You know, so that's kind of like how that was. So my thoughts my thoughts became clear, and I had more to say. Sometimes you know the, the rhymes we get a little more nerdy, but I like nerdy. Nerdy is good. <laughs> you know what I mean? The only time I used to not like nerdy. It's when my street nigga friends didn't like nerdy. But mm. it didn't it didn't mean I didn't like it. It just mean I didn't like them not liking it. You know what I mean? When I right. stopped caring about shit like that, all's well. You know what I'm saying? Because well, I don't think... What do you think, consider? What do you that, consider nerdy? What do you consider something nerdy to put in a rhyme? Um, What's some nerdy shit to you? It's the syllable connection. Rapidy rap. Yeah, it's vocabulary. It's the four or five. So, ooh, the four or five syllable. Ooh, if I could find, if I could find one word that's five syllables and then find five words to match that and then make a punchline out of it, that's that's real rapidy rap shit. Yeah. So it's not so much the content. It's the it's it's how you're putting the content together. That's what that's what people, nerdy some about people, it. Some vocabulary. People, some people can't do both. You know, some people, mm -hmm. some people like they, they're really good at the mechanics. Some people can do connect compound syllables, use punchlines and tell a story at the same time. You know what I mean? Right. That separates good from great. You know, some people, mm -hmm. some right. people, people call great and they do shit like when they, when they not saying nothing, they just hit the gas pedal on the flow and trick everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like. Oh Those yeah, dazzling things real quick to make everybody go. Ooh. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, with your hands or. <laughs> That's the oldest trick in the book. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't like especially nerdy with rap those fast rappers. I don't like nerdy rap. that's not saying nothing, but I love nerdy rap. That's saying something like Elza. Elza is a juggernaut to me. You know what I mean? But I understand why some people may not fully grasp the greatness that is him. Hmm. And he been like that That's since he was like was seventeen about. years old. Like he was the first person I seen when I went to the hip hop shop. You know what I mean? I went in there and got gonged. He was seventeen years old and he was shredding everybody. Mm. Elza mm. been nice, mm. been nice. Yeah, I love his. I still listen to that Elmatic album he dropped. I'm like, ooh. First of all, he had the balls to even fuck with an Elmatic, and then to do it like that. Yeah, he did that. I still listen to that album. Let me ask you something. What do you what 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 kind of hip hop are you listening to right now? What what's some new artists that you that you digging? I like YB and Cordae. 
Mm-hmm. I like YB and Corday. It, it's it's hard. It's kind of hard not to like him. You know what I mean? Like he can rap. He's young. He's a rap. He's a rabbity rap. <laughs> he can style. rap. He's young. He's enlightened. He's enlightened, and he stands mm-hmm. for something. You know what I mean? Like to me, that's mm. part of it. And if you could grasp that young at a young age, then I, you know, I gotta support that. I like IDK. I like uh, JID. Mm. Uh, yeah. I like. Uh, it's a lot of them. I, I like uh, y'all seen that kid. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. At Ben, y'all seen that kid? That he got the video where he got all the rings on. He got all the Mm-mm. championship rings on. Mm-mm. It's I, like I, I the, know, man. that song. That song is crazy. It's a. It's a are lot you, of. It's a. It's a lot of people that I like, but I like little baby. You know what I'm saying? Are like, you aware of a uh, friend to the show, uh, Stove God Cooks, and his uh, album Reasonable Drought? Of course, man. Of oh, course, I. Man. Of course, of course. I, I Just making that. I sure fuck, that that's on your radar. I fuck. You know, Prem made Prem made sure that I listened to that album. He damn near made oh, me not he? want to listen to it because he was recommending it too much. I'm oh, like, that's I'm what's gonna up. Listen to it. I'm gonna listen to it. Shout out, Primo. Thank you. I, I get it. Y'all having y'all New York moment, Prem. Okay, I'm gonna listen to it. Listen to it. <laughs> that's yeah, upstate not, New I'm York, though. That's thought. upstate. I thought it was a dope album. I've been liking him since he, the first time I heard him in the Cypher, BET Cypher. Mm. I felt like he torched it and nobody was really saying nothing. I'm like, why mm. they ain't talking about this dude? Right. And then um, Rock Marcy, you know, yeah. like I like the whole, the whole Griselda movement. Yeah. Um, Benny, Benny, Benny is a monster. Mm-hmm. Conway. Conway is a monster. All of them. All of them. Mm-hmm. I like the, uh, RJ Payne. That's mm-hmm. my dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had him on the show. He bodied that shit too. Oh, man, he came mad squabbles. squabbles. He came and rap. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, he came on. He like, came on like our, show. our early shows. Yeah, when we was in Jersey, he came on there, and I had another young spitter from uh, Philly named Mad Squabbles, mm. and they was going back and forth. And it was a sight to see, brother. Yeah, I might I, 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 I'll send you the link to it, actually. It was okay. a sight to see. It was something special. When I first heard R.J. Payne, my man Paige Kennedy put me up on him. He came to Detroit and shit. We was in here kicking it, and he put me up on him. I heard him rap. I heard him one time, and I went to his website and bought all of his albums. Mm. He tweeted me the next day, like, I may be tripping, but I think Royce the Five Nine just bought my whole fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had somehow. I he was doing videos where he was in a car and smoke was coming up, and he was freestyling. And I just came across it, one of them one day. I don't know how I came across it, but I was you, like, you know, Yo. you know who, you know who a monster, who's a monster, who Sai the Prince. Oh, I know that already. Oh, yeah. You ain't telling me nothing. I don't know. He's a, he's a different kind of monster, bro. I know because he's on some, he got knowledge in his shit, too. Like, he's saying some next level shit. Like, he's not just a dope rapper. Like, he's yeah. got that conscious shit going on. Like, oh, yeah. I see him. I'm a, and he's I'm, like the best kept secret everybody's fucking ghostwriter. Man. From what I understand. He could, yeah. do, he could, do, he could do so many things. But like him, King Los. King Los is another one. Mm-hmm. Like some of these guys, man, it's just like I just don't feel like rapping with all the time. <laughs> Black, yeah. Thought, Black Thought, like I, it, there was a point during the pandemic, man, where it was like three different people sent me records to get on, and and Tariq was on all three of them. Right. <laughs> I'm like my nigga. Like where are you finding yeah, the? Yeah, like you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to give me some time, man. I can't just be like, I'm highly distracted, triggered right now. You want me to rap behind Tariq three times in a week? <laughs> Hell no. Hey, Glorious Gregoria says, hey, Royce, Allegory was the best album of 2020, in my opinion. It's one of the few physical albums I actually bought. No skips on the album, man. Thank you. And he tipped you five bucks. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, Allegory. Available now on all streaming platforms. Y'all Look go get that. Look at us moderating and shit. Come on, man. I'm I'm trying to be professional out this bitch. Do we I have, do my, we have uh, a, um, a chat? Banners did we ready? have a chat in the last one? Uh, no, we didn't. Okay. So this this is the first. Yeah, we was just kind of private last time. If we had a chat, it would have been recorded um, right. Right. on right. YouTube, and then we wouldn't have had the bullshit. But the people are here right now. 
Um, people, do y'all want to directly ask Royce anything right now? Um, oh, shout out Nick Grant too, little young cat. I think Nick he's Grant, hey, he's dope Grant, too. Hell yeah, hell yeah, yeah. My God. yeah. I like oh, my Nick God. Grant. I like Nick Grant. He's super nice. So there's a lot of them out there, man. I got man. Yeah. I've been finding some super like. Nobody know. I got a couple of dudes that's crazy nice that you go to their page and they got like 300 views or something. And I'm like, I cannot believe it. Like, that's kind of how Stove God was when I first met him. Like, I'm looking around like, how did not nobody discover this guy yet? Like, that's all right, though. I like being the first person. It's like by the time the rest of the world get up on him, like, man, I done did like four songs. You know? I'm, I'm on to finding the, the, the next. All right, I'm, I'm going to give you all a jewel. I ain't got nothing connected to this kid right now or nothing like that. This is just how I do. I just I just big up dope rappers. All right, y'all go check him out because he's on actually on titling or on all them other shits. His name, he's from Chicago, and his name is 1159. 1159 1159 1159 check his shit out <laughs> okay. oh, 1159 i'm gonna have to write that down that boy okay. nice that boy nice he got that that strong fat boy voice lyrical as fuck mm. dope 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 I'm telling Ooh, you, Jamar that. putting me up on something. I'm, I, I just put you up on I'm... some shit. Y'all ever heard? Y'all ever heard Cricket? Cricket, little brothers. You know, Cricket got a bunch of little brothers, right? No. Oh, just I think like I that? heard something. I think what, I heard something they did. What they name me? Where they what they were name like, here? What they, they go by? Family business. They call family business. Yeah. Mm. I heard something they did where they were like. Like one side was defending J. Cole and the other side was defending No Name. I think I they heard do, they do stuff did. like that. That was dope. They like, man, they it's the first time I've ever seen anything like this. It's like it's it's a bunch of them. I don't even know, I can't even remember how many of them it is. Fifty thousand of them. They all sound like a bunch of crookets. You yeah, I'm about like, to say they all sound the same. I, like, I can't like really tell who was who. Like, tarantulas, you know what I'm saying? Like they all come in the studio, everybody writing fast. Everybody using punchlines, everybody connecting syllables, everybody super nice with it. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. They said, what do you think about Flea Lord? Flea Lord? I don't know who that is. I heard of Flea Lord, but I'm not I'm not familiar enough with, with, with his music to be able to say. Neither am I. You know who I like though? I like um Montana. I like that kid. Oh uh, a uh, uh, three hundred? Montana 300, yeah. Yeah, he was on the show. He was one of yeah, our guests yep. as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's dope. We had him as a guest. We doing the damn thing on the Godcast, uh, you know. <laughs> we not out of touch. We know about our young artists and all of that. Like, I think a lot of people think I'm a hater of um, just new shit yeah, or something. No, no, you know what no. I mean? Like, I don't fuck with none of the new shit at all. But, I yeah, I fuck with You know what I mean? It just got to be dope, man. Like, don't try to force me to to like some shit that's like that's whack. That's I all like you. like like you know. If it's dope, I'm gonna fuck with it. I don't give a fuck if it's you know the beat is not traditional hip hop or whatever the case may be. If it's dope, I'm gonna fuck with it. Hang on, let's see if Godfrey is. I, <laughs> I think it's you. part. Of, I think it, I think it's part of it's part of growing up, right? Like um, you know, like how my how my dad and mom was when I. You know, when I started listening to N.W.A., you know what I'm saying? Like the way that the elders talked about just hip hop in general, you know, like a lot of them didn't even think it was really music. It was like it's no, no, there's no musicians. There's no there's no anything. It's not it's just you are just talking. It's not poetry. You know, it took right. a minute for them to realize the genius in it. Not not saying that every generation it flips like that. But I think that's one of the that's one of the cool things about getting older is not being able to connect with that young shit. You know what I'm saying? Like because there's certain programs I can't use, like making beats, like because they're it's evolving into something that's doing too many things for you. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I'm not right. That. But the younger well, generation see, I, loves that. They love. That. I they was go, a, a big um, MPC guy for a long time, mm. and then I just recently got me the machine just trying to learn some new shit and i actually kind of like it you like the machine 
Yeah, I like it. It's cool. I fucks with it. I like how you went. I actually kind of like it. Yeah, I do. See, look, right. look. I got the bitch right here. Can you see the bitch? Yeah, bitch my, right son use, my son used my son used the machine. But then I got an NPC over here. I can't uh can't bring that into play. But um, yeah. Yeah, I feel bad sometimes for these youngins. Like, they'll never know what it feels like to use an NPC. They'll right. Never know well, it's the too easy because the they got shit now hundred. with. It'll just chop it all up for them. Like they'll just go like this. It does it, everything. It's all chopped for them. Like we had to painstakingly they, they, they draw, like they draw, mm. they draw in their drums, bro. Like right. you don't even have to you don't even have to have rhythm to do that. It's just like one, three, one, two, three. And everything's or, on the grid already for you. And it's just like I'm like, bro, how do you use this? Remember gotta, when you used to, to have to edit with and it was numbers? Like they can actually see the wave now. Like you couldn't even see the wave before. Like I was on the original NPCs, you were editing the front and the back was just numbers. You couldn't see the shit. Like now you see everything. Like I got a Raven board right in front of me. So I'm touch all of my shit is touching the shit now. Like I can like move the tracks around with my fucking hands type of shit now. Like the shit is retarded, yo. It's yeah, good and I bad. Like, I like I like not connecting to a lot of that shit. I don't I don't think it's cool for for like older cats to try to like connect to the younger cats you know it is it's creepy you know what i mean like at a certain age well not too much to stop going to the club stop dressing like you're a child and, mm. and um show that you can age gracefully in, in this shit black thought is a regal, say that it's a regal man he's he he, he dressed fresh as fuck he got great right. beard he, he raps <laughs> age appropriate and he's nice and he's extremely successful you know what I mean? Yes. Like, I, that's what you should want to be. I like. always tell, like, anytime I'm asked, like, is there any advice that I give to up and coming artists and females? I always tell them, study the elders. Stop. Don't don't try to compete with the younger ones. Like for me, for a rod digger, I have to pay attention to what MC Light and Queen Latifah is doing. I can't. I can't try. You know, be consumed with what a Megan and a Cardi is doing. I have to, you know, I got to figure out where I need to be when I get that age. So it's like, you know, I always tell uh, up and coming artists, you know, just just find you a find you a OG to study and 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 move like that because you're only gonna get older in this game. You never, you're not gonna get younger. And the, if if you think, you know, if you think the shelf life for men men in this business is sure, it's even that much shorter for females so we definitely have to know how to not look like auntie in the club or you, you know you don't want to be the 40 year old trying to twerk and shit all that shit so it's like yeah uh you know just find your og to study figure out what your next move is going to be you know by all means if you still you know if you still got bars if you still sharp you know throw it on folks uh Hey, now and again, let them know you'll still whoop somebody ass, but all that trying to fuck that up. I'm about to take over the game, and Oh, what they wearing now? Turns, turn. Well, now everybody just wearing thongs and shit. Like, I feel like, I feel like the younger you try to look, the older you're going to look. Yes. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's, that's it's, a it's, fact. It's, it's kind of like, like, have you? Um, that's a fact. It's kind of like. You got you have to you have to learn to be okay with things, you know, and it's like you don't have to rap forever. Like you rap as long as your raps are the most valuable thing you can contribute. Mm -hmm. once, once there's once you possess something else that's more valuable, then you just move on to that. You can always mm -hmm. be present. Or you know I mean, or if you rap as you get older, right? You don't always have to dress the way you dressed when you first started rapping. You see what I'm saying? Like, like I've mm -hmm. seen people like, a, like Big Daddy Kane and 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 Dougie Fresh. You see these guys right now? They dress like grown men. They dressed like any other young dude when they first was coming up. But as they got older, you know what I mean? They dress age appropriately. Like if you don't have no fucking if you in your 40s and you ain't got no fucking suits and blazers in your fucking closet, that's a problem. 
<laughs> that's a problem. Like, like you need to go out right now. I don't give a fuck. Men's warehouse, wherever the fuck you need to go and get you some real grown man shit. A blazer at least. Get you a blue blazer. You can rock it with many things. Um, but yeah, man, you can't be on the, you know, the hip hop fucking graphic tees and all this crazy shit, you know into your 60s and shit like that and yeah you up in the club and tapping girls on the shoulder and all this get your old ass out of the club man <laughs> get your ass home and and and, and, and no my thing bed, is day party. i can't do the club day parties and kitten hills my, my the for the days of the five hey, day parties is the shit now right for for, for, for our age <laughs> a sunday day party that starts at 12 and 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 over at like eight Shit, it's the best. Yo, you know, you know what's so funny though? As we've gotten older, you know, remember how the show, remember how the stage time used to be like two a.m. You realize as we get older, show time went from two to twelve to eleven to like nine to eight. Not now, doors open at seven. Show time mm. at eight. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I be. Mean, I be telling promoters like, "Yo, son, I gotta be back home in the bed by midnight. This show, I I got to be on and off the stage by like eleven forty-five and shit." Yeah, so they, their whole experience at shows is just different now. Where yeah. it's just different. They like to they like to all show up together and jump up and down together. <laughs> that's like that's what, that's what having fun is. You would I mean? you like they're asking they're down. asking a whole lot not, of to cut, not to cut you off would you uh ever think about uh entering the battle rap arena doing one of those battle raps where someone of your caliber battled maybe a battle rapper or another just any rapper for money I, or I, whatever the case may be yeah i would think about it but i wouldn't do it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I definitely think about it. I mean, the MC in me always thinks about it, but it's just right. The, the you know, like the prep time and my memory is terrible. You know, I mean, mm. that's my biggest thing. My memory. You know, it would take me a minute to kind of like memorize it well enough to be able to um, theatrically kind of say it. Right. Like, like I don't know. I, I think just, uh, mm. Math Hoffa's doing these one verse things. It was like Legends or something. Legends in the building. I, I know I saw him with uh, go against Meth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I but that like, I, didn't, I didn't. I mean, that was contrived to me. That was a film thing. That wasn't like a real battle to me. Like it was cool or whatever, but that was different to me. Like that wasn't. But, like that, but I mean, it wasn't it being wasn't on battles, stage. It wasn't the battles that we're used to seeing, but right. it, you know. But it was still like it was I cool. Was, I was very impressed with them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was it was cool. It was cool. I'm just saying, yeah, it definitely wasn't what we're used to seeing. And I don't know how they that, take months to how that format for how that format yeah. plays as a battle because it doesn't them really seem is, like a real battle. Them niggas is like they 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 condition they condition to be able to come up with shit, memorize it real quick. You know what I mean? Like they that, that muscle is just right. sharp. You know what I mean? Like that's a that's a different skill set for me. I got to jump into a different gear. You know, and then no, that's um, like yeah, that I gotta sharpen. Like... I gotta sharpen and then I gotta I gotta strengthen. So it, it would probably take me a minute. I mean, you know, I of course I think I could do well, but I ain't one of those guys that think, you know, I'm about to go in there and just be wiping niggas up. Like I respect the battle rappers. You know, what I mean, I think these niggas talk a little too reckless about them niggas. I think them niggas <laughs> some of them niggas are fucking great. You know what I mean? Like it's just a different thing that they do, you know what I mean? Like it's not to be slept on. I don't right. know. No, I, I've seen some of those. Just jump in there. I've I mean, seen that's some of those uh, prep courses. Like, nah, niggas will go lay that shit down in the studio like it's a song and memorize it and for months and have sparring sessions. Like, no, it's it's a very it's a very intensive process. You know, ours is the homie, and then you know, few few of them cats is my homie. I've seen I've seen the work in the prep that goes. You know. That goes all behind the scenes leading up to that shit. It's like I, I see why they, you know, they right, and that's why, and that's why we're recording artists. You know what I mean? Like what we do, 
we make it look like it's so seamless or whatever the case may be. But for a recording Excuse artist, you know, yeah, they might have said that shit mad times. Um, you know what I mean? They might have said that shit mad times um, before that perfect fucking um, verse that you've been hearing on the radio or whatever the case may be. Um, right. And yeah, but you didn't know because you weren't in the session. You only heard the, the final version. And they made sure that vinyl, that final version was of such artistry that, you know, it sounded like some one take shit. And whereas a lot of battle rap dudes, though, are not good recording artists. Yeah. What's that all about? You know what I mean? Like they'll be able to they'll be able to do the damn thing. Um you know, on stage and all of that and, and battling each other. But then when it comes to like trying to make a record that is actually something that, you know, people are really fucking with, I don't know. A lot of them fall short. Why is that? Mm, do you think? I think, I think the majority of the time there is a stigma there, but I don't, I think the majority of the time it's just, um, you hearing guys that just haven't developed developed as recording artists like i i think i think some of them some of them have been capable they just didn't they just didn't stick with it you know what i mean like because if you become great at battle rapping and then you take a stab at rec at being a recording artist there's a high probability that you know you're gonna fall short and then just go back to what you know mm. but being a recording artist is something that it's a it's a it's a progressional type of thing you know what i mean like nobody just jumps right into that shit. You can come off the streets and be the nicest nigga in the world and then actually recording vocals in the booth and hearing your voice Some in whole your ears other shit. is a totally new thing. <laughs> yeah. You. That within itself is an art. You know what I'm saying? So it's a two-way street. It's just like recording artists jumping right in the battle rap ring, thinking they can just jump right on stage. Right. It's like they're going to chew you up and spit you out. Not not necessarily because they rap better than you, but just because you and they, you, you're in their realm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so you're making me see. So it's basically where you've been developed at is where you're going to shine. See, some SCs are developed in the studio, and then others are developed just out on the street in, in ciphers and shit like that, battling each other. Yeah. I, and um, I think that's. I, th I thrived at the Ebony Showcase. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, I was going there every Tuesday and I was rapping and I became nice. I was battling and all that. Then when I signed my first deal, it was like I could write the, the craziest verses to a beat. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me, if the verses are good and the beat is good, then why is the song not good? You know what I mean? Mm. Like It took me a long time to understand marriages. You know mm. what I'm saying? Contrast and um, <laughs> concepts and song structure. And you know, just all the, all of the songwriter things that don't really matter when you're just writing some shit down on some paper to to tear somebody's head off. Right. You know what I mean? A lot of times, those kind of raps don't even translate in song the same way. You know, mm. like something that you would just say acapella, it's amazing because it's acapella. You know what I mean? Like you try to put it to a beat, and the rhythm turns it into a whole nother experience. Right. So if you know that then you might as well just write something that caters to that experience. But if you just do, if you just do one thing, then yeah, you're going to sound like you're lacking in one of those departments. You know what I'm saying? But I think they, a lot of those guys are capable if they put, the, if they put the time in. Hmm. Absolutely. Well, we've been chatting it away. Um, yeah. I got one, last, one, uh, one last question for you, Royce. Um, when are we getting the next prime? Um, I got this thing that I'm doing. Um, it's like a mental health initiative okay. that, I've been, that I've been working on. And um, I'm almost to a point where I'm ready to launch it. As soon as I launch that, I think I'll be able to kind of think again. You know what I mean? Okay. Like right now, I don't have like writer's block or anything. I just, I'm so distracted with everything that's going on in the world. That it's really easy for me to just come in here and like do some wild shit, like write one bar down and then do it like a two hour long phone call where I'm yelling about something. Then I'm on hmm. somebody's live. Then I'm fucking talking to my girl. And then next thing you know, I got a different beat up. I'm just all over the place. 
Yeah. I'm all over the place. Well, that's yeah. been me all year. Tell us about this mental health initiative. What is this dealing with? Um, it's just, it's just, we're gonna be. Um, I, I partnered up with these two organizations. I'm, a, I'm gonna be giving a lot more information out about it too. But I'm partnering up with these two organizations, and we just we're basically gonna um, provide mental health care to um, underserved communities, people without health insurance. You know, like any way mm. you want it. You know, virtually, mobily, mobile. You know what I'm saying? And we're just going to target certain areas. We're going to try to get people in who don't think that they need mental health care. We all do. You know what I mean? Like every black person should see a therapist, you know? And then the, the other, the other, um, the other thing is just to raise the awareness um, of the importance of mental health care and try to try to rid our community of that stigma that's attached to it that goes along with just therapy in general, you know what I mean? Like us as black people, we just have a certain way that we look at it. You know what I mean? Like we, it's not, it's not viewed as like an amenity to our culture, you know? And that's, that's one of the disadvantages that we have because these things are readily available to other groups of people. You that's know? right. So we, we need therapy more than anybody. Any and, people. and other groups of people um, are easily, you know, able to get a pass. Like, oh, they're just mentally disturbed. That's why they shot up a school. But, you know, if if any one of our babies do that, you know, we're just thugs, animal, broken home. It, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't, we're not afforded those, those same type of passes. Like, I know for a fact, you know, my babies and my nieces and nephews, like, Fuck yeah, they need uh, therapy. You know, my daughter watched her best friend get shot in the head at age 15. Like, literally went to the store to get a blunt and came back. And he's, like, laying on the ground leaking. Nobody but, has more PTSD than us as black people. What? Are you I kidding? can almost it's, guarantee that each so one of us here right now has seen somebody get murdered in front of them before. How about right. it? I can almost so guarantee true. that without having to ask you anything. I know. It. Like yeah. how many people can really, how many races of people could say that? You put three Asian people together and you say, oh, I guarantee these three people have seen somebody get murdered in front of them. They'd be yeah, like, no, I, I, I never think, seen, I, think, I never. I think, the, I think the black experience <laughs> in America, just period. The black experience in America requires therapy. You know, just in order to be able to navigate through this shit, man, it's like it's fucked up. It's 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 set up to, for our demise. You know, so we need to be able to put things in its proper perspective. We need to be able to know. We need to learn how to unpack things. We need to learn how to communicate. We need to be able to identify with certain things, certain feelings. We need to be able to draw a correlation between certain things that we do that we may identify as like a character flaw and we need to be able to draw a correlation between that and something that may have caused it that makes the world of, of difference if we can wrap our brain around things we can elevate past those things but if we just view these points these hurdles as just some shit that we're going to normalize then we're more than likely going to stay in those places you know a lot of us come from neighborhoods marginalized neighborhoods subjugated neighborhoods that we've been marginalized to. We didn't choose to be from these areas. You know, we, we play the, the hand that we're dealt in a way that just says, you know, shit is fair. And then, you know, some of us get famous and get on the TV and tell you that this shit is fair. Everything is equal when it is not. You know what I mean? Like, you can conquer the environment when you know, when you have the information. You know what I mean? And you can't you can't pop you can't properly play, put things into perspective if you've never been taught how to communicate my dad never communicated mm. you know what i mean he would do him and my mom would get into it late at night 12 he would do some horrible shit. he would hit her in front of us or something like that next morning we all sitting at the table eating breakfast like nothing ever happened you know mm. what i mean so that became my way of dealing with everything just i just suppress it i just take it and put it somewhere else so I don't have to deal with it. And, you know, I took my first drink with Dr. Dre at 21 and I just said yes, because I didn't want to say no. You know what I mean? Mm. And that one drink turned into me being an alcoholic and that alcoholism turned into me 
turned into my coping mechanism to deal with things that I didn't even know affected me so seriously mm. until I was talking about it in therapy and I was in tears. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you don't have those moments, if you're not able to pull those things out of yourself, then you can't you can't heal and you can't grow. And a stagnant, a stagnant man is just, you know, like it's nothing worse than a black man not reaching his potential. We all got the potential for fucking greatness. You know mm-hmm. what I'm I don't even be surprised when I can see a nigga 360 or some shit. 360 dunk. Yeah, dunk right. Two hands from the free throw line. That's not even surprising to me anymore, bro. That's like that's 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 hood shit. 360 dunk with your feet is some crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Listen, man, you know, I don't want to keep you all night, man. You've been more than gracious to to even come back here after the fucking <laughs> fiasco. <laughs> 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 that was last time. Uh, I take full responsibility for that. Um, but yeah, I, I think this was great as well. Um, Me too. I agree, man. I, I definitely appreciate Y'all having me, man. It's always an honor and a privilege to 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 be in the presence of legends, you know. Right. And I thank y'all for everything that y'all do, man. I really right. really appreciate you guys. And for the record, you know, now that all this Vlad shit is done, like, you know, tell your boy Marshall, <laughs> we good. <laughs> <laughs> We good, uh, he'll, you he'll know. Like to, he'll like to hear that. Remember, yeah. I was telling you. Remember, I was telling you last time we we spoke and shit. He told me to tell you what up, but he especially, he especially, told me to tell the queen, what up. Right. You know so he was just like, yeah, man. Tell him I said I'm I'm, I'm, off, I'm off that man. Tell him I said what up. But yo, you gonna see Rob? Tell him I said what up, man. That's what's yeah, up. Yeah, like look, it's like he's like a little kid, man. He's like the same little kid from you know. From back, back when, <laughs> right, man. Well, Yo, my, my 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 illest memory is uh one day we were, uh, back we was doing Park Hill and shit, so it was all us outsiders, and um and, and was there and I was there, and you know, n- you know niggas is niggas rocking, but it's like I'm the girl and he the white boy, so and the crowd is looking at us like. We not about to smash the shit. So, so I feel like it was just like one moment. That was like my one like bond moment with him and shit. When we kind of looked at each other like we, they about to pull this shit out of us. But <laughs> okay, girl. Okay, white boy. Fuck it. Yeah, they, they, used, they used to get him a hard. T- he used to have a hard time, bro. We about to just give him what we got. But no, nah, you know, it, it's a damn. You know, it's a damn thing. Like I. It's like he was on the road more with the house. Like I was pregnant and I was baby mama, so I was kind of removed from like the, the men moving around and stuff. So they they were more together than I was, but that was like one of the you know one of my memories of uh, of us on that grind. Like and none of us was signed at that time. It was like I literally had a, a one piece Dicky Carhartt. That was like my <laughs> that was your rhyme uniform, huh? Yeah, that was that was like my about to tear the stage down uniform and shit. But uh no, we, we definitely has some I've heard some crazy stories and shit. Definitely definitely give him my love and shit. Let him know that you know, niggas love him and miss him. I definitely will. I definitely will, man. Well I y'all brother will, man. Y'all keep y'all keep being great, man. Yes, sir. Uh, you're a friend to the show, and you definitely just helped us be even greater by uh, blessing you, blessing us with your presence. Uh, and we thank you, man. Thank you for coming by, man. It's an honor and a privilege, great one. Yes, sir, bro. All right, peace. Bye, man. Peace. Peace. Oh, man. Hey. My people. Hang on. Why am I here by myself? Hang on. There we go. Hey. There we go. Man, this was a good one. That was. That was this a, was good, a good one. one. Not People. as good as the first one. Nah, nah. Actually, no. Actually, we, we pretty much covered all of uh, 
we pretty much covered all the same. Listen, territory. we had other dope moments. I told you that was the dry run. We had dope moments that were just as organic in this one. And none of it was contrived. We didn't try to redo anything like that. So, um, yeah, Word. it was great, man. I was happy. Thank you so much for our guest once again, Royce the Five Nine, for joining us. Uh, you know, Godfrey tried to join us, but uh, he was looking <laughs> a little sleepy. So we had to let the brother go. And you know, nighty night, you know, go get you some nap time or go drive, put your head out the window, whatever you got to do. But um, I feel you know, like it's hopefully, really, it's, really, it's really been like two months since I've done the show because we we. Didn't, we went like a month without recording and then you've been kind of going for like the last right well but i've been doing more than once a week so so that might it what it be too like you know it's I, mean? more like, why I, seem like I, I did cam like and my son pretty much in the same week you know what i mean so but yeah. shit, you back girl and yeah we back you ready for tomorrow too? Are we gonna be back tomorrow? If you we're ready be for back tomorrow? tomorrow, okay. So now tomorrow we're gonna. Tomorrow's the pil- uh, we can talk politics. I'm gonna politics, watch the whole debate, and that, then we're gonna have somebody. We're gonna actually have somebody that that was uh was groomed by Al Sharpton and all of this type of shit, and he's on funny. your side. He, he's gonna be someone that you. What's my wait? Wait wait. Hold up hold up hold up hold up. What's my side? He believe well. What's he's he believes. Your side is get rid of Trump at all costs. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. That's your okay. side. Yes. Okay. So he's he's on it. Like that. My 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 side is my position that I'm going to take is, um, I believe my vote is currency. Uh, I'm not voting till y'all do something for black people. Change my mind. Boom. That's well, going to be the premise. Well, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Because that those two aren't mutually exclusive. Now I believe in both of those. Okay, well we're gonna talk about it then. We'll we'll, we'll talk about okay. it. Okay, I, I I mean I don't trust me. I wasn't. I'm not. I'm not impressed either way. But that motherfucker over there with the stand back and stand by and uh uh-uh. uh yeah. You want yeah. you want fucking dog whistle through the whole damn debate. You you. You over here telling motherfuckers, oh, you better watch out for them black folks coming up in the suburbs. You telling the white boys over here. You telling the white supremacists over here, stand back and stand by. You said, uh-uh. Oh, it was too too much cold. Mm-mm. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody that donated in the super chat tonight. Shout out to Pushing Black. They said, we appreciate you all for standing up for our people. We need more of this. So tired of seeing everyone benefit off our culture. Why, thank you, Mr. Black. Thank you, Gregory uh, Fazzaro. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you, Floyd2001. He said, everyone in the chat, give at least $1 to support. Yeah, we had about 4,000 people at the height of this. We got 2,600 right now. If everybody donated a dollar, oh, my goodness. You know how much we could, uh, how many things we'd be able to do with that? How many more people we getting ready to... Uh, Bring on to this thing, because I'm telling you, we about to take over. Your man has lost quite a few uh, subscribers and quite a few views. And we've gained quite a few. Um, And we're going to keep that momentum going. We're going to keep hitting you with the best interviews and the most authentic interviews and the ones that homie can't get. Um, Yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. Shout out uh, Mark Ferguson. We appreciate you. He said unity. Black twist. Jamar and Vlad, Vlad planned all this. All right, don't listen to that bullshit. They're going <laughs> to no, no, fuck I'm around sure. and believe your crazy ass. Nah, nah, nah. Matter of okay, fact, okay. when I talked to... When I talked to... Um, We're joking. I'm when joking. I talked to uh, uh, Star from Star and Buck Wow, shout out to my man Star. Um, He's like, before I go, let me just ask you, uh, is this a plot? Was this a plot by you and uh, Vlad? No. Oh, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, not at all. Like, um, nah, certain things we're not playing yeah, with. This we, is, not, this is, not yeah. playing about the minister. This is real shit. And once you once you put, it's not, it's beyond just the minister now. Like, it started with the minister, but now it's about the disrespect of us all. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the minister is just at the head of that. But really, 
by him not doing what he needed to do, he disrespected so-called friendships. He he disrespected the people that put him where he's at. He he disrespected us all as a whole. And once you do that, you are op. <laughs> Straight up, you are op. And right. now it is what it is. And now I got to do it. Now, now it's just... It's, it, it's not personal. It's just business now. You know what I mean? So now we, I got to conduct my business in a way such that makes me rise and makes him fall. It is can, what it can is. I, can, I, can I ask you a, a, a serious question? Like, if he called you on some, like, real sincere shit, like, yo, okay, I, I, I fucked up. Like, I, I'm willing to apologize for real right now. Like, I didn't. You know, I had to step back and think and reflect. Like, if he came to you on some, like, some dead-ass sincere shit, would you, you know, would you be willing to make amends and move forward and resume business with him? Well, it ain't no real business. You see what I'm saying? Like, 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 and that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, ain't no real business happening. That's what I'm talking about. Like, if you want to give back to the community, you want to give back to the people that put you where you was at? You're supposed to put certain people in positions of power. He had an opportunity to do that. He never did that. He could have He could have donated. To, we got strangers right here right now in the Super Chat that's donated more than he has to the Godcast. Like, come on. Like, like put people in power. Like, I, I found out <laughs> how, about how much this dude was making every month. You know what I mean? He's been doing this for years. You couldn't throw... You couldn't throw a, 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 a fella a month worth. Like, come on, man, stop it! Like, stop it. He was, he was, he was definitely happy with the format of how he had it, and it didn't even come to his mind to try to put together, uh, try to put other people in power. You see what I'm saying? And that's part of his downfall too. And then he just got real arrogant, started thinking he could talk about shit that he had no business talking about. Black people getting reparations, fucking all kinds of shit that he had no business speaking on. And then the final straw was him talking about the minister. I mean, that was just, that was it. So here okay. we are. You know what I mean? But we're not going to keep belaboring this fact about fucking v No, I know. You know I, I, mean? I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to ask. I mean, because I know, you know, I know you guys were, you know. Thank you, Walking Art. You know that you guys were cool, so I, I'm just, you know, I'm just asking, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, is this like it, it or you know, is there something? That he I mean, if he say? if he apologized, that would be great. You know what I mean? But there would still be other things that he would have to do. You know what I mean? Like now, now it has escalated. Yeah, okay. but but at the same time, it's like you know. We good. I, I can't, I can't, I'm not about walking backwards. Like, you know what I mean? Once you did that, I don't feel like I should now walk backwards and, 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 and you know what I mean? I'm moving forward now. So, I mean, you can apologize if you want, but I'm still moving forward. You know what I mean? We doing what we're doing here and I'm not, all right, now we going back over there. We're going to give you all the views now. Like, you want to hear my commentary, you're going to only hear it here. Or you're going to hear it on, you know, platforms that, um, you know, are run and, and controlled by our people. You know, Hassan Campbell, okay. you want me to come on your joint? I'll be on there. T.I., you want me to come on expeditiously? I'll be on there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, um, You know, I just did Tariq Nasheed buck breaking um, uh, movie and interview for that. I'm on there. Uh, and he might be on here. You know what I mean? Um, and it is what it is, man. We, uh, you know, we be in on code. We, we, um, it's about solidarity right now. He be getting me charged. I, every time I read one of his tweets, I be ready to go outside and fuck some shit up. I'm like, oh, let me, I be, I be having a long walk after go, going. Who down. you talking about? Tariq? Yeah, no, I said to Tariq. Yeah, I said, no, right. it'll, it'll, He'll get you charged, like well, you know, right, motherfucker, right, right. He's talking about race soldiers and all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he can be ready to fucking load up the shotgun on somebody. Well, listen, I can't wait till we 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 get him on here because um, yeah, we got things to talk about. Word. Um, uh, but yeah, 
another great episode. I uh, appreciate y'all for coming through. Once again, hit the like button before you leave. Um, don't forget to comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit that notification bell and then click all because you want to get all notifications whenever we release something new. And we're going to sh- be striving to, you know, at least at least one joint every day. Um, shout out to my producer, Greg Abraham in the house. Uh, appreciate you. Shout out to all my mods. And uh, yeah. Shout out to Godfrey. You know he's riding around somewhere in a rented in a fucking Hyundai singing fucking the fuck what is he singing when we first got here? <laughs> no, uh, dear. I'm <laughs> And, and he sang it as white as a motherfucker could sing it too. This and I sang it along with him. No oh, we oh. all sang along with him. People came in like, "What the fuck is going on here?" <laughs> oh, B one salutations. Thank you, Black Voltron VBA twenty twenty. Said B one and salutations to you and Rod Digger and Royce the five nine at Lord Jamar for this broadcast. I'm a new subscriber to the United Mean Godcast, and I have never subscribed to that xenomorphic. Parasite Vlad TV. Well, thank you, Black Voltron. We appreciate you. Can we get a B1 in the comments real quick before we go for all my people? Because this is a black uh black first space. Get all my B1s going in the chat right now. There's a B1. What's a B1? That means black first. Has, uh, hashtag black first. Come on, uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's a you know. Within black media, um, B one is a, is a is a is a code. It's a thing. Okay, no, nah, cool. I, yeah. look, look, so when you I, see B one, that means I've black first. I've been completely uh, off the radar for two. Like I haven't looked at an Instagram or social media or nothing in like the last month. Like, if I you were able to see it. all the chats right now, I'm I'm just clicking on them. But no, I'm, I'm yep, I'm seeing B one. Yeah, it's a bunch of B1s right now. All right. This one B1 said, beat that bitch with a bat. Hey. <laughs> well, yeah, man. We definitely appreciate everybody. Detroit in the house. Thank you, Isaac Bynum. Mega insert. Thank you. We appreciate you. All right. Well, shit. We're going to get out of here. Get ready for tomorrow's show or maybe shows. I'm not sure how many we're going to do, but I'm going to get these interviews in and put them in the can. You best believe. So, yeah, once we again, might, we might have, I'm about to say, we might have to knock them all out tomorrow because I won't be available Friday because I'll be where? Spartanburg, Friday, October 2nd, Midtown Lounge. Hello. All right. Well, 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 Friday's special guest. Should I let them know who Friday's guest is right now? Um, You know what? I I am a firm believer of not speaking things out loud. Okay. Because well, 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 well. Friday's show because listen we're gonna do one tomorrow and then mm-hmm. we're gonna do one Friday too I mean, he just said Friday is good for him he couldn't do it tomorrow so it uh, has to be Friday I might just have that to might, y'all might be on y'all own and I might no nah, it's all good it. it's all but, good hopefully but, okay. hopefully uh Godfrey will be awake and not moving around and you know all of that I might have to have a talk That's with cool. Godfrey represent represent I have to have a talk with Godfrey but anyway um <laughs> <laughs> Look, when I said, when yeah, I well, you at the show, end, girl. About them shows, I'm like, yeah, that promoter show got to be over by 11:30. Back in the hotel, by shout out to my brother Reality in the house. He's a moderator. Peace, Reality. Um. So yeah. Anyway, man, for the United Mean Godcast, I am Lord Jamal. I am Digga Digga. Peace. Peace.